always I always forget. I'm sorry, people. They can hear me now. <laughs> and they can hear you, too. I forgot All right. uh, to turn up the microphone again. Like, I've... Uh, that's how professional Hey, look who is just... Uh, look who just joined the side chat there. The side chat is... There we go. Red pill. Is he is he here to run off? I, I, uh, I wonder. So, let's see. I have... Uh, I have... Um, right here, I have uh, honorary tabs... Um, and then if I go to uh, this here, we, we've got more tabs there. So um, what do you think? We got some some tabs, some tabs because a red pill, and they're red tabs. So they're they're uh, red hey, pill they tabs. Are. So many tabs. I know. I feel enlightened already. I know. I'm I'm much more. Uh, my IQ is going up, and I'm feeling much more skeptical. So. <laughs> So red pill, uh, I, I take it you're here to to uh, to run off. Um, you're still welcome to join um, if uh, if you're feeling if you're feeling up to it. Um, you know, I would I'd love to hear his explanation of the difference between a skeptic and a denialist. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, mm. I didn't. So, so somebody had recommended that I go get some actual cans of tab, and I don't think I've had any since ever. Um, and I haven't seen any since I watched a live Bobcat Goldthwait stand up video. So, oh, it looks yeah. like we need to provide a history lesson on for uh, for Red Pill here. Yep. So, all right, he, he says, apologize to me for not setting a debate and time. I didn't agree to, and we can have a debate. Um, I will say, I, I am sorry, I did not uh, mean to offend. And uh, I, um, I did try to contact Red Pill Philosophy in six different ways, but um, he didn't respond. I don't know why. Um, maybe he was busy all weekend. That happens. So, and then this morning I, I, uh, I sent one more message in um, uh, as a direct message on Facebook saying either way I'd, I'd give them a, um, uh, a link to join. So, but um, somehow that was offensive. So I'm sorry that was offensive. So, interesting says 33 different ways would have worked. I suppose that could have. So, Anyway. Okay, so he just said the Twitter account you guys have been adding all day isn't even mine. Well, that aside, that doesn't explain your complete rejection of responding to the direct messages via Facebook. Let me get the let me get the tab out of here so that we can have we can see your your not face, Jared. <laughs> There we go. Tabs have been moved. Uh, he says he was banned from Twitter over a year ago. I don't know. Uh, I knew I knew the Twitter one probably wasn't much of anything. But um, but even still, yeah. Like if you tried what six other ways or whatever. Well, yeah, it was and... yeah. Um, I did. Sh um, you know, Facebook is pretty aggressive on sharing. Uh, letting you know if you share a video, if somebody else shares your video. So, so anyway, I was, I did, I did what I could. What do you do? Yep. So, so um, I don't know if uh, if you're if you are interested or not. Um, I I guess I don't know how to contact you. Sounds like a self-created problem by him then. Be. Well, if he has time to be here, I mean. Yep. All right. Well, um, I don't know if we have an answer yet from him, but uh, mm -hmm. maybe next week at a date and time we agree to. All right. I can do that. Um, well, that means you have to respond then, Red Pill. Yeah. So, so let me know. Um, you can email me. That That is a, a good way. mctune at mctune.net. Uh, and we can set it up. I do have a tentative uh, 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 person next week. And uh, if, if 
you guys are on Facebook, this guy is is quite quite worth the the, the trip. <laughs> John Watson for two pounds, the independent variable super chat. I was listening to that this morning uh, <laughs> when Riley, oh, like he he just can't stop cherry picking. He has ten citations, and they're all just like one sentences cherry picked out of an entire work of you know multiple pages on the scientific you know method and uh and he just cherry picks so uh on on independent variable yeah it must be manipulated directly by the the experimenter like mm, yeah yeah you didn't you you only looked at you only took the ones that (laughs) said what you wanted to say because i got a bunch that doesn't so all right red pill he says uh, i'll email you have a good stream so thanks and uh, yeah we'll set it up um for some time here so all right so for tonight we've got uh we've got a a different idea here uh jose is in the house is that right oh did somebody say oh no no sorry c4 jose destroyed uh uh, sleeping warrior with his citations i had a meeting at that moment i couldn't go uh, I had to stop uh, listening. So, but it was early, and then you know I had things to do. So, so here's the here's the idea. Uh, I will debate Christ Puncher and Jared here. As, okay, I'm scared now. As uh, I will be the flat earther. So I'm wearing my um, planner walk. Uh, flat earth noose shirt so you can imagine that i i am a flat earther because of the shirt i do feel weird wearing this shirt out in public because because people see it and they're like what is that like oh (laughs) um it's you you don't know i'm sorry (laughs) Uh, Uh, oh no no they don't know you should be thanking them for restoring some faith and hope in humanity Oh, I see. But it is. Good. I say. I see. Gary Wybenga's here. He's always here. Who wants to debate with you? You got nothing. Uh, says Nils. Um, I did invite Gary Wybenga to debate. He keeps saying sometime, sometime. And uh, so what I did is I set up um, a debate with him that I knew he wasn't going to be there. Uh, and I and I just I had queued up a bunch of his videos that I was going to to review so i still have those videos i still have the notes on them if uh if i run into a day where i can't find a flat earther because sometimes it gets a little like today right like um that is the hardest part is finding somebody that's interested in debate and isn't boring right because like yeah. like two weeks ago anthony dunham like do you guys watch that it was yeah, he was just kind of yeah. boring right he didn't have anything he just had some memes and he and I'm like, what's your best evidence? Well, I got four thousand memes. Oh, yeah, that's not. Oh my goodness. So, um, I got. I gotta say, it's good you're not in the room with me. I had Indian for lunch, and and then some enchiladas, <laughs> some enchiladas oh. that my wife made that have some nice onions, raw <clears throat> onions on them. So, um, Ooh, it does sound good. I got a little, little stew going here, a little. So, ah. Uh. Yeah, right. I just had soup for dinner. I still have that sore throat from being in the states the other week. There. Why? How, why would you get a sore throat from being in the states? It's not like oh, when I... you go to Mexico and you say don't drink the water. <laughs> no, I know, but I think it might be turning out to be like um, bronchitis or something. Ain't nobody got time just for that. Bad, just bad luck. But like, the soup did help, so there's that for for now. Yep. Well, good. All right. So, Gary, Gary's going off about, <laughs> he sure did. He even announced it the day before. Yes, I did. I, 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 what is Amy Hogan saying about? Yeah, I, I did. I did uh, announce the, because the thing is, Gary doesn't respond to emails. Um, I have his email address and he doesn't respond to it. He doesn't respond to like, I don't know how to communicate with with him um you know i'm 
I have lots of ways to communicate with people, but whatever. Well, have you tried interpretive dance? Um, you do not. You do not want me to try interpretive dance. <laughs> um, I don't. I, I, I've gone dancing in foam. Uh, and Mr. Puncher, remember this, I was talking about this, where the foam yeah, is up to your shoulders, right? So the only thing you see is my stupid head bouncing around, right? And um, uh, that's it. I, that's it. I need that. James Collins, MC2 should rap and dance. No, I, I did rap earlier and it was <laughs> muted and it was for the best. Right? Yeah, it's true. I can't, I can't unhear it now. It's... Yeah, I... Because you know I'm totally an amazing rapper myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, smoke signals are the best way to reach a flat earther. That could be. So, all right, G Gary. It would be, Gary is just it, sore about uh, <laughs> about everything. Uh, well, yeah, about the the debate that I tried to set up with him. Yeah, Gary, I was trying to you know trying to get you get you out here, but you didn't have. All right, somebody said I should wear a hoodie. A baggy hoodie. Hold on a second. Let me like a baggy one. I, I don't. I just have this. So. But you gotta represent, you know. I, I don't know how to represent. I don't know either. How's this? <laughs> you, you gotta channel your inner prat. No, 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 <laughs> no. Hoodie's off. No prat. <laughs> Hey, you're already a step up. You're not in the garage next to the water heater. That's true. The garage is right over there. Okay, <laughs> let's let's get on. I need to. Maybe I do. You know what? I do need to hold on. Got to get that sweatshirt back. I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna do my flat earther as Pratt. Um, yeah, and there's no steering wheel in front of me. Sorry, I, I can't I can't do that quick. Okay, so and I should get. Um, there's this, there's this globe here. Hold on, you two talk for a second, and I'm gonna go get a. Uh, hold on. I'm gonna get a uh, uh, something to put on there instead of the that glowing globe. Uh, oh, this should be. Uh, where, where, where is this going? I could, um, I could beatbox. I well, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> let's let's try to try to guess at what he's going to replace the globe with. Ooh, I'm, idea. I, I'm thinking a dinner plate. Hmm. Like I'm, just, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm not sure what he's trying to go for with it, so I have no... Uh... Ha, oh, wait, wait. Oh. So is that a dinner plate or a frisbee? Or a frisbee. That's a frisbee. <laughs> Damn, I was close. <laughs> All right. Hey, it's, no, it's, it's always me that brings the dinner plates in whenever I'm on the MC Dune show. All right. Mm, fair point. As I'm here finishing the last of my dinner at my desk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, JM Truth was smacking in the microphone last night. I should get some food too, so I can do that. Okay. Oh, yeah. but, but see, that's the thing is, I have the decency to mute when I know I'm going to be taking a bite and chewing. And on top of that, too, this is just for fun anyway. If it's an actual debate, you might want to be a little bit more. Uh, I don't know if I'm call it professional, but just. More of a being a debate form of some sort, right? Uh, whatever. All right, I am now uh, flat earther. I don't feel the spin. You'd you'd feel the spin. Why do you think you would? Because because you'd feel it. So I throw a ball up and it comes right down. Therefore, it's okay. Uh, okay. Not uh, hang on, hang on. Let's stick with the whole. Have you seen feeling the spin? Have you seen the let's clouds? Stick, let's the stick, underside let's of the with... the underside of the clouds are flat. Not always. If you look, there's oh, yeah, actual texture. To them. I have pictures. I have hundreds of pictures of perfectly flat bottoms of clouds. Every one, every single time. Absolutely, no texture and yeah. no texture. And I took that. Well, other people took them, and I have. I, well, I don't have them. <laughs> I can't get them now, but I, let, I've seen to, them. Let's, 
let's try to take this one point at a time. So let's go with the first one. And the, and the horizon, you can't, thin. you can't tell me the horizon is some physical thing. It's n well, I mean, if there's no horizon, explain a sunset or a sunrise. Oh, it's perfect. You, you just don't understand it. The fact that you don't understand how a sunset, it works better for flat earth than it does for your spinning space ball. Well, if it did, then how could it ever said in the first place? And how, how high is the sun? It's perspective. Don't you know when things go farther away, they get closer to the ground? It totally, it's the perspective matrix. Closer, to, closer to the ground, yes. Obscured by the ground, no. Because what what about perspective from your explanation causes the arbitrary truncation? Of the object sorry let me be clear what causes the, the bottom up bias so what makes you being blocked? what makes you think the sun is actually something it's just it's just a it's just a hologram well it's you know it's, um uh, spectroscopy is a thing you can use that and you just made that up no no, no you, we didn't. You, can go, you could go read up on it and see how people know about that yeah spectroscopy yeah, no, is you're gonna have to prove it what over what, 100 years old? what was it and did do you have a, a an uh, experiment that you did to prove spectroscopy uh personally no but okay you well then 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 how can i confirm it if you didn't do it well how do you know what the sun isn't what no the the, the burden is on you because you're making the wild claims well, while it's true, I myself have not done all that. There you go. You can go learn and find out. No, no. I, you didn't do well, it. I, I, hang you know hang on. It. Hang on, Christ Puncher. And he kind of screwed himself there because he also made a positive claim about the sun being a hologram. That's true. Well, yeah, How it's obvious. It's, a hologram? it's just an observation. And if you can't see that, then I don't know what fantasy land you live in. Well, uh, fantasy that, land it? called reality. Yeah, yeah, that's where I live. So if you can't demonstrate in reality what it is that you're claiming, then then you're just it's just your faith in words. Oh, all well, right, well, let's, go back, let's go back to step one then. Why do you believe that you should feel feel with your body the rotation of the Earth, which is one revolution, it's a thousand miles an hour, day. and it's sixty six point six thousand miles an hour around the sun. <laughs> And it moves it, yes, through the galaxy at no. sixty six hundred thousand and six hundred miles per hour, and and it's moving away from the center of the universe at six billion six hundred and sixty six six thousand six hundred five hundred miles an hour. We're not so sure about that's that all, one. all but I understand numbers and made up stuff. I un I understand numbers are big, but let's stick with one revolution per day. I, yeah, and no, it, it's a thousand, hour. Hang on. a thousand hang on. miles an hour. Thousand miles per hour. It's it's a. Hang so now no, no, no. the horizon. The speed, the speed the, is irrelevant have you seen, to that. And hang I on. can't no, believe that done. you we think are not done with point you one. think we that a boat goes one. over the curve. <laughs> um, we are it, not it, done with point one. We are actually have. Oh no! Not I destroyed you on that already. No, you didn't actually address my question. Just because you got destroyed by it, and now you're trying you to please, run from it. Can you please restate my question back to me? I don't need to restate your question. I want to make sure you understood what I, my question I, actually you, was. I don't even know what you're talking about. Exactly. So I, let me rephrase my question. What part of your body is the primary method for detecting this motion can, that you're expecting i can feel i can feel motion and movement i don't know why you how can't. how i don't know i'm not a biologist if you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're in a car you can feel the acceleration and the bumps yeah. of the acceleration yeah not, i can feel when i'm in a car i can feel that i'm moving no, yes you're, you're feeling the acceleration which is a change of motion no, when we're at constant magnitude. speed i can feel that we're moving no no you really can't no, because you're still getting bumps what, from the road. You what, are still what getting experiment a change did you do to prove that you you can't feel it? What was the independent variable and the dependent variable, and did you uh, prove the cause? 
See, here's the problem with that is mm -hmm. I have been yeah. in an aircraft where hey, we have been I think in a you're just admitting that you don't on, understand no. it. Oh, no, no, no. I'm trying to break this down for you and actually give you something from my personal experience to maybe help you understand this. All right, I now, was in an air. Somebody, I was in an aircraft. Yeah, somebody in a wants some metric numbers. In a prolonged turn, and we lost orientation because of the duration of the turn and bank. This is why pilots need the instruments to help maintain their orientation. Otherwise, you have disorientated pilots actually lose sense yeah, of where it, they how are. How does a gyroscope crashed. work? It it never it. It, if it stays, Observation it of stays, angular momentum yeah, is if a it beautiful stays, thing. Uh, rigid in space, then as you go over mm -hmm. the curve, why doesn't it? Why doesn't it uh, <laughs> fix that? Right? Because because as uh, you go, the angle packets are going are, to are going to change the are angle. <laughs> are you talking about a gyroscope based artificial horizon? Yeah, this the the ones that spin. They have yep right yep. Uh, so they have this beautiful thing inside of them called pendulous veins. Oh, you. Those no, I don't want. Yeah, you're just making that up. Well, how, how do the pendulous veins work? How do they work? They actually take an input from outside the device to help with the correction to keep the orientation oh, with what, the aircraft. What's that input? Combination of actually gravity and air. All oh, gravity. Just a theory. Just yeah, a theory. scientific you can't theories prove are it. beautiful. You can't prove. Actually, you can't prove it. it's just somebody's somebody's actually, theory. Just just. You can't prove what what experiment did are you, you use you, to you, prove gravity? Art, Art Cavendish. It's a beautiful thing, and I'm actually, B. M. Furball did a long series on it. I'm allergic to bananas. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, that that random edition was just too too funny. Captain it's a lovely non sequitur, though. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. So what's, what's that from then? Because I that I didn't. Uh, I don't know about that one. I just came into the middle of that bullshit. I just came in just in time to see MC go. I uh, I like bananas. I'm allergic to bananas. Oh, well, that's it. either way. <laughs> shit. I was muted over here. I thought I was talking to you guys. You guys didn't hear me. I was shitting my pants laughing because right. <laughs> I came in just at the right time. Oh yeah, well, family friendly. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, no, yes, word. Um, uh, all right, it's okay. Um, he can't help us. He's Canadian. I gotta be out of character. No, for no, a no, no. We gotta work on that. Gotta work on that. I'm Cavend working on it because if I want my channel better too. <laughs> Cavendish is a type of banana, so. <laughs> oh. All right. I don't eat. I don't eat bananas. So. Or cheese. Yeah, I don't like cheese either. All right, so everyone that knows knows that. Yeah. All right. So gravity doesn't okay. exist, and and what else does a plane use to to navigate? How does it know where it's at? I'm not gonna lie. AT two would know better than I would, Chris. I don't know planes that well. Well, what type of aircraft are we talking about? Are we talking about a low end Cessna or a high end commercial aircraft? Like I say, uh, I don't know. All seven three seven. All of them. Well, there there are two ways. There are. INS systems, which are inertial navigation systems, and there are also GPS-based systems. Oh, GPS, the ground positioning system. Uh, if it's ground-based, then ground. what? If it is ground-based, then why is the receiving antenna on the aircraft on the top? How of do you know it's on the top? The bottom? Did you install it? I've worked on. I worked on aircraft right? professionally for ten years. All right. Do you have Do you have video? Do you have evidence of that? I have my military service record. Well, that doesn't tell me anything. That doesn't say it, that, it tell, that you installed the GPS on the top of a plane. It, actually, I could pull out all my training certificates of all the systems that I was yeah, qualified certificates on. Can be faked. Which, which includes Do you have video of you doing GPS. it? I have the actual training jacket with the step-by-step sign-off oh, with actual a, signatures. You have a jacket. Mm. <laughs> I have a jacket. I could put I could put GPS installer on my jacket. <laughs> sorry, sorry. There, NANA got me with a comment from the chat. Uh, 
trying to keep it PG. Trying to keep it. I'm trying. Lord Howard trying. Uh, so, um, so, so somebody was asking. Just, somebody was that. asking for those numbers in metric, and I don't. I don't do metric. Metric is by the Freemasons and the Zionists and the Illuminati and the Bilderberg Group and the the Swiss Guard. So I don't do metric. Or is it because you can't uh, convert meters to kilometers? Well, I don't work. I don't work in. It's a. You, you know what? You, hey, it's a thousand. You know, what? You take the you take the kilometers and you multiply by a thousand to get. Not quite. You divide by <laughs> you. I don't know what you. Yeah, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? It looks flat, so that's all I need to say. Hey. Mic drop. You're making so my point. I looked. I looked out the window today, and it was flat. I observe it flat. It's my experience. <laughs> so, uh, the horizon is the angular resolution of your eye. I no, thought I'd be been... sick of making fun of these guys by now, but it's not. No, not old it's impossible at it's all. It's too funny. Because, like, I was laughing. I was watching a video. And it was again. It was thirty minutes long, and I, for thirty minutes he just kept saying, "I can't feel it moving. I can't feel it moving." Exactly. That's all that was happening. You can't feel it move. That's why we know it's not moving. Yeah. Oh. This, this, well, this, here's my. And you have to trust your senses. No, you don't. Our senses, our senses are better than any instrument wait, man can create. Wait, wait. Remember. <laughs> Wait, hang, hang on. So, if we are to trust our senses, then why do I need glasses? Yeah, I might have something. It's not my fault aids. that you need glasses. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> the senses can't, work fine. If if I'm to trust my senses, I don't need glasses. Then I can't. Then I can't believe anything visual past six inches in front of my nose. That's not my fault. But if it's all supposed to be repeatable, and hey, just look at it, believe your senses. I need aids. So all right, so to, so get I, your, I need help. You get your, with my visual. You get your P nine hundred, and and then and then take some video of of ships as they're not going over the curve. <laughs> yeah, right? but if they go further as, when they're actually and then, over and the then, curve, and then you zoom, and then you get your P one thousand. Right, and then bring them back from 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 uh, behind. Right, so you need Doesn't to have your happen. two, one for each of your eyes that are no good. Uh, right. Someone just said. Uh, so you had red pill. You had red pill was going to come on, like no joke. He. So the history behind that is red pill called out for a debate. MC Tune offered, Red Pill went radio silent. <laughs> He's such a bitch. <laughs> well, he did. She did show up in a side so, chat. I, I, I don't know if that's bit. a bad word, but that's that's to me that's not. But if it is, uh, yeah. Anyways, I'll I'll be careful. But uh, sorry, that's amazing. He's such. He'll challenge like anybody he thinks doesn't possibly know enough to take him on. He'll challenge them. But if they. Um, well, well, so uh, anyways, yeah, so he so funny. he accepted. Yeah, so we're gonna apparently he's gonna send an email and we're gonna set something up. Okay. <laughs> we'll wait, see. wait, wait. Let's see. Let's see this. He can he can argue Q birth. So we have um, Javier in here. Oh yeah. Um, do you hear me, guys? Yeah. Yep. yep. Can you hear you? Oh, good. Uh, right now. Uh, Thanks for having me. I'm just gonna be right here listening to you guys until Flutterford Flutterford comes on. So Javier had emailed. You'll be waiting a while. <laughs> yeah, if, if yeah. there's anybody that any flat earthers that do want to join, like Gary, for example. Um, bring it on. Uh, yeah, bring it on. Like so McTunier um, McTun McTun you're an animal though. I've never seen anybody like I was like, what did I do? I was watching you stream and then I was like, Oh yeah, like debate, debate, debate. And then I think I had to go do something. I left. I did something. I think I watched like a movie with my wife and stuff. She went to bed. I came, sat down. It was like one in the morning. It was four hours later, three and a half. It was one of your long ones. I was like, oh my God, he's still on here. Yeah, and he's <laughs> in the same time zone as us. 
he was still going. I was like, you animal. Just and who was it? Was it hip hop? I was like, God, no, you got patience, boy. I haven't talked to hip hop. <laughs> who uh, was it? It was um oh, it was somebody similar. Oh, I knew who it was. It was a uh, uh, kind of like lazy, lazy jaw there. Lazy jaw. Um, remember? Um, oh. He's got the sunglasses. He's always looking oh. up from his phone. Uh, um, flat out hero. Flat out. Here. Yeah, yeah that's the one. Yeah, I don't. Hero. Just, I can't. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. I remember because I was listening to that at work the next day because I didn't catch all of it, and it was like from like a drive from here to two and a half hours outside of the city. I was listening the entire time, and laughing, and almost took my truck off the road a couple times, and laughing, especially the my, laughing part. I set Don't my YouTube to the drive. lowest. Yeah, it's funny. Oh no, we. I don't watch it. What I do is um, a lot of times it's audio, right? So I set. I set YouTube because I don't have premium or anything, so I have to like have the screen on. But I'll set, I'll plug my phone into power and all that stuff, and I'll set YouTube to like the lowest definition possible, so that I just get really, you know, the audio. Yeah. And then I pump it through the Bluetooth in my stereo in my van, and I listen to it while I drive to calls and stuff. But it's, uh, it's. I mean, I can't. It's, like I said, I thought it would get old, but I mean, they just say the pro- most profoundly stupid things. I mean, you can listen, you know, twenty minutes of like, oh yeah. Just a regular old debate, and then something will come along that just lights your world up. It's so good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I remember the one moment that I was where I asked, uh, I can't remember who it was that I asked, but I asked him, Do you believe, um, yeah, you haven't touched me, so how do you know that I exist? And they said, Well, I don't know that you exist. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's actually don't really funny. Them, but yeah. Yeah, oh, they say ridiculous uh, you know things like you could that's a philosophical thing though. I remember my mom saying to me, she's like, she's like uh, a brain teaser. She's like to me one day, she's like, like I know that I'm here. But like do you do do I like are you here? Are you do you exist? I'm like, I'm pretty sure I exist. She's like, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> fair enough, I guess. That's a good point. Well, yeah, that is here. <laughs> Ads where you do get into the philosophy and epistemology is um, <clears throat> how do you determine what is real? Do you want do you want to hear a good one? I got a good one for you. Okay, this is a fun one. Okay, so so mind teaser for you. Okay, we uh, we go to school. We learn that green is green, blue is blue, red is red. But how do you know? Now they know, but how do you know that red is the same? Your red and my red are the same red because when you go to school, they teach you what red is. So like the whole time you're just like, that's red. What if your red is my green? It's (laughs) indoctrination. That's what I mean. But at the same time, I mean, it's true, isn't it? Or, but they have, I think they have ways of knowing through the way our eyes work, don't they? Well, not not just that. Actually, when you're getting into the bands of visual light, there is a wavelength that correlates with a specific color region of that band. So you can actually say, well, red is this wavelength, and you can actually measure it as such. What they have people though that are colorblind so their eyes don't receive so i mean their eyes aren't receiving colors properly so who's to say anybody's because i'll tell you one thing if i take my left eye and my right eye and i go to the old do the old back and forth back and forth back and forth thing with them um they see a different shade of like blue hue like if i'm looking at something blue it's definitely one's got a lighter shade of almost like a greener blue than the other one and that's just between my two eyes yeah well no that that's where i go back to the whole and knocking my glasses on the desk. You can't just trust, uh, excuse me, your senses when it comes to something that you want to have as a objective uh, instance like that. Because like I said, when you are going to colors of light or breaking down the spectrum that is the visible light region of the EM spectrum, you have the color banding that happens that you can directly correlate to a wavelength measurement. So even someone who is colorblind may have issues with the image that MC Tune is showing on the screen right now. But if you were to actually measure what's coming off of that, you if you were actually able to quantify the wavelength that is being reflected back off of that image, then you would be able to quantify it and determine the colors that way another fun one is that blue doesn't exist in nature like even the butterflies the brilliant blue butterflies they use they use physics they refract the light 
in a certain way and don't they absorb the other wavelengths and yep. only uh, reflect the blue wavelength so when you see those brilliant blue butterflies like that they have they always show them on movies and stuff because they're so beautiful um you're not actually seeing blue because blue doesn't exist in nature that's why you don't find blue flowers like anytime you buy a blue rose everybody it's dyed because blue is not a natural color but those those i guess those butterflies they just use physics to reflect the blue wavelength only and, and that's why they're so vibrant too because i think it's the same with peacock feathers right that's the same idea yeah it's the, yeah. it's um they're freemasons that's what they're doing hey so that's exactly what it was in fact uh, it's part of the may, have may this... i add something for the census thing sure uh, i mean you can trust our se we can trust our senses because uh, for example when you have a fever you're feeling cold, but you're actually burning. That's true. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. So this is, I have this, this colorblind test that I set up a, quite a while ago as, uh, as an idea. Um, I am colorblind. Uh, and uh, apparently so is uh, Sparky and Jay. Anybody else in here colorblind? Let, let's know. But uh, I guess, I guess it, I'll find nope. out. So I, I thought, well, well, how about I take this test my, uh, right now? And um, and and I'll tell you. All right. So uh, there's nothing there. I, I don't know if you guys are seeing this on the uh, the chat. Do you want me to share um, the screen? In the uh, in the stream, it's there. So for anyone who's not watching the live stream at the same time, it probably would be good to share it internally. All right. Do you see it now? Yeah, there we go. All right, I see nothing. When you go to, I see. Nothing. Oh, so you are colorblind then? Yeah, I see nothing. Uh, I really? I see like six. A yeah, little six. bit of a it's number six. Oh, uh, yep. I can, I can like, I can see the pattern. That's crazy because oh, I can just see a six. And it's orange and green. It's very obvious to me, right? So Sparky NJ yeah. says he's not colorblind. His, his wife tells him what color things actually are. So, all right. Yeah. Oh my God, my my okay, my grandparents. What was happening is my grandfather had Parkinson's, so he couldn't drive the vehicle. But my grandmother, I guess, uh, like uh, she could, uh, she couldn't see shit, but she didn't have Parkinson's. So my dad didn't know this was happening, and he found out one day that what was happening is that she was driving and he was navigating, like left here, Gina, whatever. And as soon as he found out that was going on, he was like, "No, that's the end of that. You guys are done." <laughs> oh, well. okay oh well, people are funny all right i think <laughs> people are saying 57 i see nothing yep yeah, yeah it's 57 <sighs> yeah it's pretty 57. oh this oh when they uh, reverse it like this yeah so something uh, like this does give me a little bit of trouble but i'm still able to figure it out that looks yeah. like five to me That's see that one's harder but it's definitely a five i mean i can yeah. see it easily still i see nothing eight Hey MC, have you seen uh, heard about the uh, glasses for people who are colorblind? I have, uh, and they're like three hundred dollars, and I'm too okay. far. I'm too much of a pro tan, actually. Sounds a little sci-fi. Okay. Um, that, but uh, yeah, and they're they're kind of dark, so you can only use them kind of outside. Gotcha. <clears throat> um, that's a three. Yeah, yeah it's a three. It looks like nothing. three. Guys, view. I I just still I keep Is thinking back to when you. We're talking to that 15, guy that was telling 15. you you were a liar because yeah. God, you're fired up. You're less like, oh man, I could you could hear it. It was like, fuck. He just wants ooh, language. Oh, God, <laughs> he wants to. I'm like, he wants to just reach through the screen and grab him through the grab him by the throat. You could hear it. I mean, I kind of bust my ass to get the image of me. I do it for myself as a hobby, but when you got people who don't understand anything or come up make up excuses about what how things are, how they think things work, and you can't you can't even you know get on common ground of which. What they don't understand, that just kind of gets on my nerves. Oh, there's nothing that pisses me off more than when you literally know something. Like, you know, know, know it. This isn't something that you're, you know, you think you know. You've done it yourself. You've done it with your own bare hands. You know this is what it, the way it is. And somebody says, that's not how it works. And you're like, excuse me? <laughs> well, it's, like, it's like when they say, you know, there's stuff, they, uh, NASA, whoever's programmed stuff into the telescope. Okay. This is the difference between my telescope and the and the CCD camera that I have attached to the back of it. It's just it's just the way it is. When you say telescope, it's nothing but when you take out the camera, it's nothing but a tube with some mirrors and uh, some lenses inside to move light around. That's about the limited extent of it. There's nothing else in there. It's just a, a tube. 
but then you have the camera, of course, and that's. But they don't separate the camera from the telescope, so they always say the telescope. Well, what part of the telescope? Is there something inside the primary mirror? I don't know about. Is there a little image emitter on the on the wall of the tube that puts it on the uh, secondary mirror that I don't really see when I do when I check? You know, I do maintenance on my telescope. Is there something I'm oh, missing no, it, in here? No, it doesn't matter. It's, it's all just magic. NASA yeah. put it there. I know. Yeah. I know. All it's right. just some, it's just fun yes. it's just There's, funny when i listen to it then i go out and do i do imaging on the that evening and i was like yeah they had no idea what they're talking about and i just hit start on my uh you know starting hit start on my uh photography okay so. i've just got to say something about the current plate that's on there that's obviously fire <laughs> yes yeah. wow fire okay i'll type fire it, yeah, yeah it's got I, like, it looks for me. It looks like you know two eyes. Well, what the hell is that? It looks like a basketball. Yeah, yeah uh, I was going to say there's not a number there. Some yeah, of them threw me off. Some of them don't have anything. It's you know they 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 they're doing the a blind test. Hey, right? hey so, to whoever sent me the vegan bacon thing a while back, <laughs> I clicked the link and I opened the page and I never got to it. And now I'm looking at it and this is, I mean, it looks like bacon, but Jesus, it's I, made of made of rice i've had bacon. vegan bacon that's an insult to the word nice. bacon but how uh, do they make yeah how do they even what because you can't you can't be vegan and like I, you would think like okay if you cooked it in fat maybe you could make but that wouldn't be vegan <laughs> like so i don't 26. know how you make it i don't know how you'd make it like bacon oh there's a four hey, oh, there's a four 42 40, there's yeah. 42 42 it, it's it's the yeah. ultimate yeah. That's just a four. That's a forty-two. The two is dark, duller. They purposely yeah, did that. The two right is a, see, like the the four is actually more of an orange, and the two is more of like a maroon with a couple bubbles of orange in it. Yeah, there's a two. Thirty-five. They did that. That's a nine. Purpose. And they've done the same thing. Ninety-six. Thirty-five. And here I thought that I was colorblind. Ah, Holy shit! I see the record. I'm looking snake. at the stream. I see a snake across Looks the like, top. Yeah. Uh, I'd oh, say, it's oh, lines. It's asking lines. how many lines. I see one. And one. Hey, for everybody in the chat, in the group, uh, uh, on Monday, I'm going to start up a Twitter account that's going to have posting all my uh, astrophotography images. It's going to be cool. separate from, it's gonna be separate from uh, my uh, guy's few ones, so everybody stand by. I just got to wait till Monday because last night I dropped my power brick for my laptop. So I'm not going to do anything through my iPads to get everything on Twitter. So I'm just going to uh, wait until I get a new uh, power brick in. So. Cool. Oh, so you mean you can start pissing off even more people with it? <laughs> yeah, I, like, I said, like I said, I was doing this for you know fun and hobby. I didn't think people actually had an interest in what I was actually doing because there's a lot of other people who do you know better stuff than I do and more popular. But uh, I guess people kind of like what I do, so I'm going to start putting out the imagery on uh, a Twitter account. Uh, oh. It's like it's not going to be the very it's not going to be my very high end high uh my ha very high resolution stuff because that's stuff i'm going to keep uh for uh for publications and whatnot and trying to get sold and make prints so i don't want that stuff getting out and uh, people i'm yeah. from minnesota that I, we like prints <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah but uh, everybody who's listening who actually cares uh on monday i'm gonna start up a twitter account i haven't came up with the name yet but it's going to be i'll post it on my twitter of uh, where I'm gonna do all my post all my astrophotography, but uh, I was gonna do it this week, but like I said, I last night packing up, I dropped my power brick for my razor, and it uh, so yeah, I can't use my laptop right now. Plus the uh, there's a fire not very far away from me, so the sky is actually kind of getting kind of hazy around here, so I may kind of limit it anyways. No, I was, I was going to say that's definitely uh, an <clears throat> advantage you have over a number of people. The area you live in is just. It, it, damn near perfect for getting those kinds of shots yeah i'm i'm very far away from uh i'm very far from light pollution and i do get it if there's a lot of crap in the air like uh because i'm near the central valley so a lot of times the uh fresno and madeira and will basically kind of light up the the crap in the air so i kind of get this kind of a haze in the evening time uh so that kind of hurts me but right now there's a fire not very far from me a forest fire so it's kind of 
maybe yeah. make it, make, making the evenings much more orange, so it makes it kind of more of a pain in the ass. But I'm just waiting for there's uh, supposed to be some storms are supposed to be coming through, so it'll basically kind of move the air and push everything out to get the air nice and clear for a while. And plus, in the evenings are getting much colder, so that means my camera's going to get much colder, so the resolution should get better. That's good. And I'll have to get Twitter one day. I keep on saying, like, I'm not hip or with it, you guys. <laughs> I'm like the youngest guy here, and I think everyone has Twitter except for me. Oh, you got to get on TikTok if you want to be trendy. I don't know what that <laughs> is. Can't that, I, it's a YouTube hey, commercial. I have I have an uh, MC2 and TikTok account. No, no videos. What is it? Is it just like social media or like same thing? Yeah, it's like, like short, kind of real, just short videos. Um, and they're all uh, and they're all vertical, which is painful. It, it's, I, I know. It, it, it is essentially the uh, the evolution of what used to be Vine, that really short blur video stuff. Yeah. Okay, I remember Vine. All right. Does Flat Out Hero have a TikTok account? <laughs> he has an Instagram. God. <laughs> Wait, what? Does tick does he, yeah? He has an Instagram. All right, morbid curiosity. <laughs> I gotta look this up. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> uh, I'll see if I have it. Uh... What was it? Um, thoughts by Jay Brown was saying I have a questionable picture up on my on my uh, YouTube right now. Hey, that junk has been removed. Thank you. And that is art, sir, because that is the Michelangelo. <laughs> and, uh, right, let me... What is it? The hand? What is it? The creation of Adam? What's the f- freaking painting called? It's like the. I that I don't know. It's like oh, touching. Oh, it's we've like all, touching we've Adam all seen this painting like a million no, no, times. No, no, touching. Never mind. Touching Adam is something else that they do. At the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was different. All right, so so I found his page, but he doesn't have any posts on it. Yeah, he doesn't. <sighs> yeah, I found it as but, well. But there's. There's one that, that's kind of a shame. So I found I found something. I put it in the the the, the Google Chats uh, thing there. That is from him. What I but I don't know if I should share it because it's not. I would I would review it before you share it. No no no. I, I looking for you guys to look at it and to see oh. if, if, if I don't want to. I don't want to share information that should not be shared. Right? I don't want to dox him, and it has his name in it. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you mean he put out his own address out it, there where they can it, find it? No, it's not tied to his um, flat out hero name. I think. Uh, yes, okay. it is. Yes, it is. It, it, in the sense that he has the Instagram display name as flat out hero, and the link to this site is right there on oh, his about that's it okay i was looking on here okay so if you yeah you find his so if everybody if you find his instagram uh and then you you look at that um um uh, yeah tommy tommy's saying don't do it <clears throat> so i won't <clears throat> but if if you're interested you can find flat out hero on instagram and then you can <clears throat> go to his website which is a blood over intent website thing so Good, good oh, job, Jesus. flat earthers. You, you, you're, you're, you're buddies with quasi luminous and flat out, flat out, flat Earth paradise, and <clears throat> all those crazy people. So, all right, let me let me just finish this uh, the the colorblind test. Uh, most of those I didn't see anything. I'm very colorblind. It says more than moderate red green. So that's what I knew. Just out of curiosity, when I send you my pictures of uh, astrophotography, are you seeing things or are you just kind of like uh, seeing things? So I, the, the way it works is I get less color. I don't see the wrong color. I just don't see as much. So, okay. um, well, so if you well, take, you see, you go ahead. Oh, sorry. Oh, I, was, I was just going to say, well, you see, it's not um, MC Toon that's seeing things. It's you that are seeing things. The globe heads that are seeing things. <laughs> yes. I just see what NASA puts in my uh, has pre-programmed into my uh, camera software. Exactly. NASA yeah. knows exactly which way I'm pointing at, what time I'm doing it, and you know why I'm doing it, and somehow they can figure all that out and then magically put that on my uh, on my screen and yeah. Yep. Every time. It's amazing technology. Amazing, amazing NASA-ness. 
Even Amazing. Oh, you could, they even installed it in telescopes from the 50s and 60s. Oh, I know. It's it's amazing. I just, I don't understand it. Every time I go to like an amateur astronomy meetup around here, we go out and do stuff on top in the mountains. It's, uh, yeah, I'm just amazed that you're like seeing the same thing I am. I'm just trying to figure out how NASA got our stuff to talk to each other. <laughs> amazing. It, Tommy, Tommy's in here poking at, at uh, Gary asking, why doesn't he come in? So Yeah, come on, Gary. So here's you, a, you, can, you can tell me all about you can tell me all about RPMs. So a serious <laughs> question for Gary: um, Why don't you? Right, you've said that that you're going to. So I'm wondering why why is it uh, why the delay? So he doesn't have much of an excuse because supposedly Gary lives not very far from me. He said he lives in the area, so yeah, I don't understand what his yeah Northern California. No, well, Central California. Central. He's in the vicinity. Uh-huh. He doesn't specify, so I don't know if he's farther down south by Bakersfield or he's up by Sacramento area. <laughs> God, Tommy says he just posted a new video to him, to Gary, and he tries to debunk observations but fails miserably. So, Gary's the kind of person who doesn't understand when you're looking in one direction and you see things going from your left shoulder to your head to your right shoulder then you turn around it's all of a sudden going to start going from your right shoulder to your head to your left shoulder gary oh, just that, can't gary comprehend that keeps on saying that i forgot who that was gary Weber. gary can't comprehend that gary can't comprehend when you turn around things come from a different direction yeah it's almost like it's been mirrored in a sense it's like gary uh, can't think in three dimensions so do you oh, think that like, any of them think, like, mirror just scare the crap out of them when he walks in front of a mirror and he's just like like oh that's not that arm so gary, i bet gary fuck, gary. I, I bet gary stabs himself in the eye with a toothbrush because he so, thinks it's backwards gary gary says man abroad said have you seen any pictures of the core so to you gary i ask have you ever seen an ultrasound of a baby it's the same thing right it's i would basically the i would same say technology. this i would put it like I will ask Gary this. Gary, have you seen the bottom of the ocean? We know the ocean has a... Have you seen the ice wall? Well, no, no. It's it's the whole thing about, well, if you haven't seen it, how do you know it's there? Well, it's the same process when you talk about the ocean. When you're when you're in a boat and you got your little depth finder and it says 500 feet, how do you know it's 500 feet down? Have you seen the bottom of the ocean? So you can't tell me... you're right. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, no. I was going to say that, that June's lucky that this is a family-friendly stream because I was going to say when I was a little boy, I had not seen a woman's, you know, but uh, apparently they, they existed. I found out later they were there the entire time. <laughs> so, you know, and you know what? To a lot of flat earthers, they probably still don't exist. It's all a myth. You know what? a conspiracy. Oh, Mark it's made by NASA. Hey, it's, hey it's, it's all about, it's all about the beaver. It's all a booted. Hey, you know what? I'm not so bad at that, but every once in a while, I catch myself a booting. And my <laughs> wife would be the first one to beat me up about it. She'd be like, hey, yeah. you stop that. It's all, you know, about, about, hey? it's all about the beaver. It's better, than, it's better than having cricks and ruffs, I'll tell you that much. Cricks? Yeah. You even got any chili cheese fries. I have heard plenty of American dialects that use the word crick yeah. instead of creek and rough instead yeah. of roof. Yeah. And, and they are... are and they, they are say all down Idaho. south. <laughs> no, no, Idaho boys. You go to Idaho, they're like that, which is not south, really. It's not. It's not south. It, it's that Fair. southern well, hill type mentality. Well, let's face it. Most of the ones that talk like complete hillbillies here are in the east coast. Sorry, Chess was over there. She didn't. She didn't adapt though. She's moved back now. <laughs> uh, that's true, but yeah, East is that's where you get like the very stereotypical Canadian accent. Like, hey, where's Carl? We gotta get the car and put our toques in, eh? <laughs> oh, Glober. it's like watching Stage Brew. Glober mom says that her husband uses wash with an R instead of wash, and he grew up in California. How was that? I thought that was a Wisconsin thing, but I use that with Simon Dan because he said um, he said something about. Oh, Honda. Was it Simon Dan? Oh yeah, yeah, it was Simon Dan. Right, and and uh, and he he said Honda, with an R, 
and, oh, and uh, that's British. Just, and, that's a British and, thing. Putting her like, on the end of things. Have you heard of the conservation of consonant sounds? That's for everybody in Wisconsin doing their wash. There's somebody in Boston driving a car. Ka. Mm-hmm. <laughs> gotta, gotta, gotta pack the car. That's I was the scene in what movie was it where it's uh, with Mark Wahlberg where they're. Uh, uh, no, it wasn't Mark Wahlberg. It was anyways. It was the it was the heat where the the family and they're like, "Are you a knack? Are you a knack?" And she's like, "Oh, a narc." And he's like, "That's what I said, a knack." <laughs> <laughs> oh, and and you got to remember, it is not a liquor store. It's a packy. A packy? No, it's that? a it's a bottle it, store. No, no, they call it a packy. Uh, a package store. Terrible, ra- terribly oh. racist in the right part of town, you know. <laughs> That's. Oh, <yeah. laughs> Yeah, that's like listening. He was like, "What?" That's like I listened to Anthony Riley destroy the English language. <laughs> he, uh, well, in New Zealand, we call it a bottle store. By the way, bottles. New Zealand's just weird. We just call it a beer vendor here, or a liquor store, <laughs> or liquor mart. Liquor mart. Yeah. Nice. Andrew Stoll says in Michigan, it's a party store. Yeah, that's a good yep. name for it. So, do you guys? Uh, in Australia. So, so, I had tab on the screen earlier. You know the the beverage that. Uh, oh, okay. So, is it soda or is it pop? <laughs> and yeah, right. and, and, and in the so chat, that. do you drink soda or pop or Coke? Or fizzy. Fizzy. Oh, fizzy. Oh. Nice. Oh, Coke, Coke is a no, brand. Coke is a brand. So no, but it's, it's, hey, it's people say Coke yeah, when they Coke, mean pop. It's, it's true. It's kind. Of, it's, it's kind of like with Band Aid and like you know jacuzzi yeah. and stuff like that, yeah. right? Yeah, but I say Band Aid because who the hell doesn't? Who says a fabric? Uh, like what is it? What is it? A gauze fabric tissue or some baloney? <laughs> band Aid. And but it's so, like, but like, and I get like people saying Tylenol or give me a Tylenol or something. But I mean. You know, you'd be like, I have. You mean an, uh, you mean an aspirin you know, in that case? Yeah, like I have, I have, you know, I have this, you know, kind of thing. It's like, yeah. you know, whatever. Plus, I guess, in all fairness, too, there are those certain things you just can't cheap out on. Like, if you're getting cotton swabs, you get Q-tips. Who does not buy Q-tips for cotton swabs? Yeah, you yeah. gotta. That is, <laughs> that is an instance you gotta go with the name brand because the others they just they just don't stack up. Just well, you're not getting the right toilet paper. paper. You got to triple it. You got to triple it anyways, or your finger goes right through. You know. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're doing when you're down there, but <laughs> okay, just pushing so, really hard. You know. I, you need you need I, lessons, I had... but I will not be giving you those lessons. <laughs> and Andrew Stoll asks quite the question: Who outside of Michigan drinks Fago? Uh, that would it. no. It's that would mi- be a, the in uh, Chicago would, too. It, it, I was going to say that does go towards the Chicago area, but also there are there is a fandom of a particular band that is all about the Fago. I had never even heard of it. The Insane Clown Posse. No. Yeah, all, the, them in years. all the jug, all the juggalos <laughs> love Fago. It's it's a requirement. So you must be a juggalo. Pentalka. No, I know a few of them. Pentalka says he's Mexican. His parents say the knife is sharp, and sit on that chair. So when you go to cola. when you go to Germany and you go to like McDonald's, you want a soda, you say cola. Cola. Oh yeah. All right. So hey, Javier, uh, can yeah. you say the knife is sharp? What was that again? Say the knife is sharp. The knife is sharp. Uh, I don't know if that was enough. Well, it was good. It, was, it got enough. <laughs> was to jump up and say, I'm not your show pony. <laughs> 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 no, that's okay. It's okay. So, and, and, uh, so do you eat when you put, um, what we call beans, what do you call? Uh, beans? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Special beans. Special beans. We're, we're yeah. learning so much about each other. Yeah. But I do have some magic beans before for a thousand dollars. One day they'll grow and take me to that castle in the sky. One day. <laughs> and yeah, but, but I, I do I do go and ask for, and buy Q tips, not cotton swabs. Yeah. No, everyone gets Q tips. You cannot cheap out on those. Otherwise, you're gonna deafen yourself. Oh yeah. Stab stab yourself in the in the gray matter. <laughs> yeah. What are you using them? 
What are the, what are the other ones made out of? Like sharpened yeah. sticks? This, like, this, right this. This. Oh, this is nothing. There's nothing on the end of them. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Because so, it's a tiny little piece of terrible yeah, cotton. Yeah. So, all right. That'd be so gentle. I didn't. So gentle. I didn't get the answer from Javier on beans. Yeah, uh, we say beans. No, in Spanish. Not, not in Spanish. Habichuelas. Habichuelas. He's from Puerto Rico. Yeah. Uh, Puerto Rico. That's all I know about Puerto Rico. <laughs> all right. That's all I know. Habichuelas. That's it. Mandelbrot said, uh, made a comment about someplace in the Northeast says water instead of water. Um, are you sure you're not confusing that with the Boston, Rhode Island area where instead of a water fountain, we call it a bubbla? Or just Hooters? A bubbla. A bubbla. Not, not. Is that for me? You guys are weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, you say that like you didn't know it already, guys. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just trying to I'm, uh, when MC2 put out that big, that blue stick, whatever he said was for ear cleaning. I swear to God, that was like a slurpy straw. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's, it's my wife. My wife does, she knits. So I don't knitting. I going to say it. Yeah. It's a knitting needle. Yeah. I don't. Well, that was, that was double ended. She has stuff sitting here. Nope. Uh oh. You lost it. You're dead. No, I didn't. I didn't touch it. It wasn't here. It wasn't here. It's on camera now. <laughs> but but when it comes to misunderstandings, New Zealand is really well. The rest of the world is really bad for un misunderstanding New Zealanders, especially when I say something like, "Oh, I've got a deck of cards." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> when I when I was at when I was at Merido, I had to go over to the uh, Kiwi side, which is over there at the Scott Station, and we had some Australian guys that were over with us. So they came over there, and I swear to God, listen to a Kiwi and an Australian guy argue, you just don't understand what language they're going into because it just kind of blends into one another as a as a as a haze of what the hell are you guys saying. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is a family friendly show, so I'm trying to just keep it. And on top of that, too, like when they're using like, the, like their own slang from uh, where they live, it's just words that you, even if you understand what they're, the word, you have no idea what, what that word means because you're like, I, 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 I don't know. I, I, when they started arguing, I, it was so hilarious. I literally went over to the common room and there was a popcorn machine. I, I literally got a bag of popcorn, just sat in the corner, just waited until it was over. <laughs> Be like, oh. Uh, Oh, cheer, bro, sweet ass cuz. It was it was like they were naming off, you know, every insult they could possibly think of, plus where they lived at. Plus, I think they were naming off some kind of animals that they might have drove over with their car at one time. I swear to God. <laughs> Kiwis and Australians, yeah, they, they, they're they funny when they argue with one another. As American, you just sit back and pull out the, uh, the lawn chair and a bag of popcorn with those over and laugh all night. It, it's only fun if they pull out knives. So, uh, uh, and don't get them started about their dicks. <laughs> their so, dicks of cards, yes. Green, no, no, they're dicks. Hold on a second, people. We have got serious business to attend to here. Green, oh, Green oh. Price. Okay. Green Price says, which flat earther has the weirdest or most annoying accent? And his vote is Spurs. So, anybody in the no. chat? Oh no. no! Earth is seriously flat. Maybe Lemon Bird. Lemon bird. Oh, lemon bird. I don't know. I mean, Going I'm not entirely up. sure. Maybe yeah, it was Brady, another dimension. Brady does a great, yeah, Brady does a great impersonation of him. Oh, you, you got to say you got to couple up. No, Earth, 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 Earth is seriously flat. That guy's trying to make everybody pregnant with his voice. <laughs> he was on. With lemon bird, you just have to spin some sort of baloney and like just like obfuscate anything you say and just be like i don't know it could be demons like it could be <laughs> or it could be the earth is round uh somebody said dell um Del's somebody one, somebody dude. was complaining Del's about nice. mcflatty's accent i didn't i don't think he has much of an accent no. No. why why are we all avoiding an obvious choice professor funbags what are we missing? Oh yeah, orphan red. Yeah, that's an annoying voice. Yeah, that's the, the, the laugh. Oh, 
the fake laugh. Yeah, it's more the laugh than the oh, voice. It's my wife voice. hears Orphan Red's voice and she almost leaves the room. Like, and I mean it literally. She'll be like, is this what you're going to be watching? And I'm like, well, actually, I submitted her to that during our live stream together. She's like, no. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to watch Orphan. Is that like probably... <laughs> You, so you're trying to basically say that your your wife's walking down the hallway and she hears Orphan's Red's voice coming from the bathroom with the door closed. All right, so, so uh, James Collins <laughs> yeah, exactly. is saying, <laughs> like, ah, baby. Hold on, James Collins is saying I should host a flat earther imitation contest. That would be great. Oh, that would be awesome. Um, I'm angry. Oh. AMC, thank, thanks for having me. Though I got to jump off. Uh, I've got a stream that's I'm going to be starting in I don't know twenty something minutes or whatever. Orphan so. Red's uh, uh, th- marathon. Yeah. <laughs> Is Orphan Red having a marathon? No, you're uh, watching. I'm going to be doing. I wanted to watching her. Oh no! Like, I, I'm, 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 I'm doing it. I have a stream going on in a little bit, but what I was going to say is I do, I am still planning. I've said it multiple times, but I really want to set up like a hot plate and do like a live cooking with orphan beaver. One of these days, it'll be a lot of fun. We'll, we'll pick something. We'll drink a lot of wine while we're doing it. It'll be fantastic. So anyway, <laughs> thanks for having me. You go a lot and put your hair up in pigtails and do all that. No, wait, that's me that does that. Never mind. I'll, uh, I'll jump off for now, but thanks for having me. All right, thanks, thanks for being everybody. Planner thanks for stopping by. Have Later. all you guys. Thanks. I'll boot that. Yeah. Uh, take it easy, Aboot. <laughs> take it easy. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie though. Uh, when you when you said orf, orphan red marathon, I was imagining her actually running a marathon. Oh, you grow up, grow up. <laughs> that's, that's wait, 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 hang on, hang on. <coughs> yeah, slow motion to chariots of fire. <laughs> doingy, doingy, doingy. Um, <laughs> all right, so so let's see. Planner walk. Can you can you you do a good a uh, good in, uh, imitation of uh, Scotty Storm? <laughs> right. No, Scotty. No. Let's see. Um, do you want me to turn my camera on? Uh, oh hell no. <laughs> yeah. You know. I you know what? I say your go shirts for it. off. I guess. Uh, John Rapp for five Australian says Kiwis are sheep shaggers. Aussies rule. But you don't dare try to insult our <laughs> brothers, family. <laughs> he should have ended it with Kia Kaha. Australia is full of nothing but drop bears. Drop bears? Yeah, it's, it's funny. In Canada, we kind of have that same thing too with um, Alberta. You. The Australian guy will get the whole drop bear thing. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. Right, Planner Walker, are you prepping yourself to do a uh, Scotty Storm? And I, th- I think uh, everybody. Nah, <laughs> I think. <laughs> All right, um, Javier, can you do Earth is seriously flat? Geist view. Um, who should Geist view do? Why are you picking on me? What? No, everybody. I mean, everybody's got to do a, an impersonation of a of a flat Earth. I mean, I already did. I was like. Uh, this is pretty good. I need I need a oh, name man, for you, my you, flat you know, Earth. I'm, I'm not so good at that. I don't, I don't know which one is so Earth is really flat. Oh, all right. He, he's the kind of guy who sounds like he's trying to make everything pregnant despite his voice. Hey, yeah, think Antonio Banderas. <laughs> that's like that's like the the, uh, the the horny guy. I call it the horny guy. Yeah, and you have to say yeah. our beautiful yeah, dome yeah. filament. <laughs> our birth our birth our, our curvizen. <laughs> Okay, let, let, let me let me see if I can get it. Go ahead, you guys first. <laughs> uh, Jared and Christ, who the... are you gonna do? Uh, I made fun I of the Canadian. Know. I have a really annoying voice. I mean, <laughs> so Jaron? <laughs> uh, I just want plan. I want Planner Watt to go on camera with a shirt on in the middle, impersonating Scotty Storm. He says, "quote unquote," I think it's getting hot in here. I think I'll take my shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Morgyle. I, uh, oh, yes. Mr. Unite for the Children. Okay, hey, 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 MC. Okay, yeah. Hey, MC Tune. Uh, have you heard of this dome that is like, when you look at the horizon and the perspective <laughs> is like, oh my God. actually, actually calling you because, you know, it's beautiful out there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Holy, that was crap. perfect. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
Stafford. You left out you left out the whole Curvison thing, but yeah, that was spot <laughs> on. Oh, oh man, no thanks. You know, I, I haven't I haven't heard enough of him, but the the times I've heard him at your show, it's like this guy is like gra- touching himself or something. <laughs> <laughs> probably is probably is yeah he's like an, an innocent spa you know having massages and grapes you know with bait with some bait, with some oil on the side some you know some yeah. incense burning in the background because i swear to god when he showed that picture of his house from the inside with the lamps and stuff it was all pink oh. yeah I still want to, I, <laughs> that was from the 70s, i still want him man. to open that window and prove there's an ocean behind that window i know right the smash it open oh my god uh, I can't. Yeah. I, I made fun of the Canadians, so I can't do any impersonation. Gary says, uh, "Who's the guy from the show that says he's from the Central Valley of California?" That's Geist View, Gary. Gary, you know all about me. You've been on my other channel, so quit playing games. <laughs> How about this, Gary? You can come in and ask ask Geist all the questions you want, but think, you have to come in here. I think we have on my a... on my. On my on my other channel, Gary got into it about something about the her- our uh, clouds were underlit. So he knows who he's talking about. He who he's talking to. He knows basically where I'm at, and he's he yeah he's pl- he's playing stupid. One of the things that I found interesting is I recently um, received a comment uh, from Multi Tom Tom, and the com I literally explained the answers to the comment in the video. Hey, a word of caution. A word of caution when you're dealing with uh, multi Tom Tom. Be aware when you're talking to him, he is not a flat earther. He is a cube earther. He will literally make you argue the whole flat earth thing, and when you basically wasted a whole hour, he will come out and say, "Well, I don't really think the Earth is flat. It's more of a cube." And he believes in the the cube Earth with a Pac Man sun because he's a Muslim and he thinks that basically it is the the way the shape of the earth is the uh, the, Carb- uh, the Kabbalah, or how you can't pronounce it, the black rock in, uh, in Medina that the Muslims walk around. That is what he literally thinks the earth is at. So when you're arguing with him, keep in mind that he's a cube earther. So when you, if you're just wasting your time if you're doing the whole flat earth thing. Because in uh, one to two hours, you'll find out that he doesn't even argue, those, uh, argue for flat earth. He's mm-hmm. just having you waste okay. his time. So. so Gary, I don't know if Gary's listening. He must not Hi, be Gary. listening. Because he just asked again, who's the guest that said he's from your area? So Gary, it's Geist you. I'm over here by Oakhurst. You know the area. You wait. Go. Hmm? Does Gary know how to read? I doubt Probably it. He not. doesn't know anything. He doesn't know anything about RPM. So I'm losing hope. All right. So I have a question for Gary here. I don't know, Gary. Can you hear me? Um, Gary, Indiana. This uh, the image on the screen right now. What what do you think of this image on the screen? What's the image? If you go to the, uh, the YouTube, if you go to YouTube, you can see it on the YouTube. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll share. Probably. I'm on my phone, so I'm just seeing what everybody else is. Oh, gotcha. It'll be familiar to you, uh, guys. View. Very familiar. Oh, the okay, that one. Uh, I can even tell which one that it is because the uh, that's the one where the uh, satellite ran over my ship. Sorry, went over, ran over my. Uh, no, that one right there. If it, I mean, see which one he's showing. Hey, it's three of them. You have. Yeah, one that's that's, a, that's. Sorry, yeah, that's the one with the three. I also have one that has basically a uh, satellite going right through it from top to bottom. So I can tell. I can basically tell which ones are which just by the satellites. Yeah, but that one's got three running through it. Hmm. So I don't know. <laughs> I have it on like a, a um, low delay, right? You're fine. So, in your in your no. color in your with your color blindness, how do you see that? Um, I, it's it's kind of pale, tan. I don't know. Okay. Uh, and then there's no, like just, rings I... around it that are. A different color, but like on the, on the top part. Yeah, just just north of the not north, but you know above the the center there. There's like a darker. Yeah, maybe it's a, a dark brown band. band. Yeah, yeah, it's so brownish. I'm not good at yeah. naming colors. No, I'm just yeah, I'm just trying to figure out from a person who's colorblind how do they actually see my imagery? 
is you know a lot of it's you know like with the Orion Nebula that has all the the, uh, the all the funky uh, colors. Yeah, the uh, the the uh, the reds and the purples and the whites and all that stuff. I'm just trying to figure out how a person who is colorblind sees that because it's you know quite that's the that's the rose nebula. But yeah, that's cool. That one's the yeah. That's not my that's not the one I enhanced up either. That's just the that's almost the raw straight off the uh, the cards. Still actually the good program. Though. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Um. So, so Gary, I don't know if Gary, Gary's not answering. So, uh, and of course not. <laughs> so let's see. B ball for life. How you doing? So I mean, I don't know about um, you, but with my um, with my globe blindness, all I'm seeing is lights in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> well have you ever thought that maybe that's like you know when you're driving on the highway and after you like after you hit a lot of insects and stuff starts to accumulate up on the windshield how do we know that's just not all the things that have collected up on the glass of the dome over the past six thousand years well it's, it's like it's like it's like flat earthers who say you know the lights uh you just see these stars and whatnot a flat earther really needs to go out and find somebody who has a very good set of night vision goggles like you know, military grade kind of stuff. We look up at the sky, and then tell me that their do- their dome has not been shot up by a shotgun. Is there's so many lights out there you can't see with the naked eye, but if you look at it with night vision goggles, that whole sky just turns into nothing but pin lights. Like yeah, it's probably what, be awesome. it's, yeah. Or if yeah, you have access, go to an area like where you are, or even the um, <clears throat> the mountains of central Tennessee. When I was there and met up with Sean and everyone for the eclipse, after a uh, couple hours after sunset, we went outside and looked up, and the amount of celestial objects you can see just with the naked eye with the minimal to no light pollution is phenomenal. Yeah, it's like when you're at uh, Fort Irwin in California, which is out there in the Mojave, it's mile, it's miles and miles away from anything out there in the middle of the desert and if you go up on the very north side you call it the box the maneuver box because you have one you go they call it to the central corridor which is basically this long valley that basically strands the entire length of the training area then you go over another mountain range and you drop it to another valley we call that the the northern corridor it's another long ass valley when you get over there there is no light pollution from either la or vegas or nothing it's just pure black sky and when you have uh uh the, you can see the uh, uh, the uh, the plane of the uh, the galactic plane. You can see everything. You can see. You, know, you don't even, you really need a telescope to see. You know. You, you know. It's just it's kind of hard to explain. It's just really really dark and there's no pollution and it just you see so much of the night sky out there at that time. You know, guys, when you when you are in a in a cockpit uh, like in a fighter jet and you turn all the the instrument lights off. You can only see, you only see stars. The, the sky is beautiful. Man. Yeah, that would be really cool. One thing that's really nice is when I went to Byron Bay in Australia, you could there was barely any light pollution, so you could see a lot more of the sky than I could in New Zealand. I think the best place I ever done any kind of slet, and I wouldn't say celestial photography, because it was definitely not the kind of area. But way in western Iraq, out in the middle of the desert, doing patrols, and we were out there doing night uh, night defensive positions. Oh, yeah. You're you're literally in the mi- the middle of the Iraqi desert, and there's no light from anything anywhere, not even a town or anything. It's just pure black, like you're you went back to the Middle Ages, and the mm-hmm. whole sky just lights up with all the lights. And like I said, the galactic uh, the galactic plane, you can see everything. That's cool. Yeah, because I know um, <clears throat> like I live in a city. And even when I leave the city, I don't usually get far up and out where it's like black, black. It'll be darker, obviously. But um, I've, my friend and I used to go out camping to, um, like, literally, you go to an island, you go to a dock, and this is out like outside of a small town, like far as uh, far away from it. We get in a boat and go to an island, and yeah, just seeing the sky at nighttime there, it's just like, yep, yeah, this is pretty amazing. Wish I had that in the city. Well, it's like right now with that fire. I mean, it's already dusk here. I mean, the horizon basically has a very faint glow, but because of the uh, the crap in the air from the fire, Fresno and Madeira kind of light up the yeah. uh, the crap in the air and makes everything kind of this orangey tinge. So, yeah, things 
crappy for long for very long photography it kind of makes things look a little bit washed out and stuff like that so yeah we get that time from time here too just because we have so many forests around here and so if one goes and say like a province over all right let me, generally let me uh let me interject here so uh, bill smith have you i don't know if you guys have seen bill smith around in the comments but he's always great a lot of funny comments and he he trolls the flat earthers a little bit pretending to be flat earthers uh himself so he says what a stupid globe tart everything is stationary and thus no bugs can hit the dome uh <laughs> <laughs> and uh he he was uh to your conversation he was saying the best place he saw was the top of mount mauna kia in hawaii so i was born i was born in hawaii but i left when i was two years old and i've been back since, oh my so. gosh third time gary's asking oh my gary God. can you hear it's geist you i'm in the by the central valley i'm over by oakhurst he's he <clears throat> Gary have you know if you're not listening audio this on or you... yeah <laughs> um all right so I thought it would be interesting uh the guy that agreed to come in next week I'd just give a little preview not to not you know not to do anything but to just a little entertainment <laughs> so Gary he has said his name three times it's geist view gary i'll say it really slowly just for you geist view i am near oak hurst that was too fast <laughs> i know all right Can you say it again i'm sorry i didn't catch that <laughs> all right here is uh so here's my facebook and uh, Zachary Edwards is, uh, he said he's going to come on next week, it looks like. So he he posts constantly in, um, if you want to have fun, the Logical Science, t- Scientific Approach Revealing the Truth of Our Universe is a group. And he's in there all the time. And he I'm not going to read this whole thing. If you can see it, um, it's long. Oh, I'll, I'll share this appropriate. Give me hey, you got the screen time. thing going. The screen thing going? Yeah, the slideshow. There you go. All right. So, uh, but I, I will read. I'll read this little comment he has here. The top of the Earth has reached a state of e- a buoyancy equilibrium that is equal to the mass that allows it to remain stationary and immovable in space, while only the gravitational wells beneath the Earth can cause an infinite amount of space-time curvature warping into infinity, like this illustration shows. There. I'm gonna go get some salad dressing for that. Yeah. I... <laughs> <laughs> you, you, got, you, you, you gotta love flat earthers and people of their nature and how they use words that they think are really, really fancy and, and yeah. That they had no idea what that means. Yeah. No, I gotta give them well, that. I gotta saying... give them that. They, they don't actually they don't actually know what the heck they're saying, but they managed to, to say something weird. I think they just yeah, go like, through the dictionary. Like that word looks really big and long and important. I'm gonna put that one in there. Yeah. Or like they like they heard like the the basic of like the theory of general relativity, and they heard like you know if you get close to the speed of light, mass becomes or becomes infinitely massive, then gravity will alter thing apparently. And if we just put those words together, uh, huzzah, right? Just problem solved. Huzzah. You don't need any measurements. You don't need any of that. Just problem solved. All right, let's go get one. I st- I still like the notion how flat earthers think if they can debunk the globe that the flat earth becomes it becomes a flat earth by default. Nope, you still need to demonstrate the flat earth. Yeah, exactly. And and people who always go, well, I'm just a globe denier. Well, then you need to be arguing for a dodecahedron, a flat earth, a curved earth, a, a cube earth, a uh, a triangle earth, a pyramid earth. You know, you know, yeah. start going at it. It's well, think about it this way: if if the earth isn't a globe, right? You fall. Then... Off. Well, well, if the Earth isn't a globe, then it has to be another shape, and we need something to replace the globe model. Otherwise, no ships will work. Otherwise, no GPS will work. Otherwise, a lot of things will just stop working. You know? Yeah, it's like I said. Flat Earthers kind of have this notion that if they just—that's why they always go after the globe, the globe, the globe, the globe—and they never can demonstrate their own position because they think if they could just get rid of the globe, it becomes a flat Earth by default. You still need to demonstrate as a flat Earth. Like I said, it could be a dodecahedron. It could be a you know, 
Uh, it could be uh, a cube earth. It could be a hollow earth. It could be a cell earth. Flat earth, you need to address all that stuff, too. You just can't go, well, I got rid of the whole... You know, tomorrow, I always say, like, tomorrow or this evening, the United States government goes, the earth is flat. Oh, well, that doesn't mean the earth's flat. It just means somebody, they accepted it as flat. You still need to demonstrate the flat earth, so... But could you imagine yep. if they did on the news and all that? They would start denying the earth, the flat earth right away. Oh, yeah. They'd be like, oh, well, the government's saying it's flat, and we don't like the government. So either their heads are going to blow up or they're going to have to, you know, play the game. Hey, MC, MC Turn, can I uh, just ask you to delete the replay of the stream tomorrow? Uh, um, because I'm going to about, I'm about to drop some knowledge, which I'm not supposed to, but, you know... Um, um why right, would delete I, it afterwards. What, um, how about we all just use secret NASA technology to wipe their brains? <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that works. Okay. So earth is actually a raptor. Oh. <laughs> is it a bird or a raptor? <laughs> you said a raptor? That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, Bill... yeah, like a raptor, like a dinosaur. Oh, a reptile. Okay. Like, well, is it just shaped like one, or is it actually a living, breathing, uh, like, um, raptor that's just really, really big? And the stars yes. are pterosaurs? Have, awesome. have you not seen the thing from Neil deGrasse Tyson? Mm, no. Not if it's raptor-related. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I can find it. It should be somewhere. Um... Bill Smith. I still like Flat Earthers. Sorry. All right. All right. Bill Smith, I sent you a link. So he'll be joining <clears> us. <throat> oh, I still man, like Gary Wy... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I should say, yeah, yeah Gary Wybanga once again just asked, so tell me, what latitude do the stars go from turning clockwise to counterclockwise? Uh, Gary, if you're, Gary, if you're looking north and you see the stars or any direction you want, but if you're looking north, for example, or east or whatever, not north or... Basically, just pick a direction like north or south, and if you see the stars going from your left shoulder to your head to your right shoulder, now turn around. Are those stars going from, still going from your left shoulder to your head to your right shoulder, or are, they, or are they now going from your right shoulder to your head to your left shoulder? Just turn around, Gary. It's simple. I think um, I've noticed that uh, what happens is um, like they go to sleep, and they forget everything that happened yesterday yeah. so they come in and they ask the same questions over and over again uh what was that yeah like 50 first dates right <laughs> the oh. drew barrymore and adam Sandler. oh some I'm of saying. them it's even worse than that some of them it's a stream based reset like minutes after they leave a conversation with someone they've already forgotten all of the uh corrections that they've been given yeah, they just have a mantra so that that, that explains the the famous i'm awake yeah i'm woke <laughs> that's one of the things i think about doing is i'm uh from my other channels i'm gonna go down to uh, fresno and go to like hobby lobby or something like that and get uh, one of those get a uh a uh, styrofoam uh ball they use for like decorations and stuff like that and get a piece of uh, get a piece of wire and make a loop out of it and they put it on that ball and then i have a bore scope that i use for my car for doing stuff on the engine and stuff like that and if i can cut it where I could basically put the borescope in to kind of get a view of a person that would be standing on the earth and then put that wire on the sphere. So if you're looking at the wire from the surface, the wire would look completely flat, but yet it's still sitting on top of the sphere. I'm thinking about making something like that. It's all for that curvizing thing. Gary <laughs> Wybenga, I, like I'm, I'm not sure that he's serious. Which way does the Milky Way turn? Um, it's going to be clockwise from uh, one side and counterclockwise from the other side. It's, it's, uh, the, the milk, the Milky way turns that way. <laughs> that way. I think the Milky does way the, turns does the, does the Milky way go counterclockwise in one hemisphere and <clears throat> clockwise in the other. It's not a sphere. I think he means I, I, you have to, you have to like channel sometimes. I think he means, um, which when you were viewing it from earth which way does it go because it's wider than you know we see it everywhere north and south 
So I, I don't. Know. It spins forward. Oh. Yeah, because yeah, because it's the south, the southern hemisphere facing the the center, right? Like roughly. Actually, it's rel actually uh, it's relative. You're talking about pointing towards the core. Yeah, like the yeah, like the core. The, 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 the great attractor, basically. Isn't that the more the southern hemisphere? Because isn't the isn't our solar system's tilt like fairly big compared to the way the uh, the the galaxy to uh, rotates around the core or revolves around the core? I thought I saw that somewhere. I'm just trying to picture it in my mind. Well, according to the stars Run turning it. opposite directions at the equator, the Milky Way should split apart. Lol. No. Your inability to understand how it works does not disprove the Earth being a sphere. Gary, put it like this. Go down the go down the uh, Highway 41 and basically go on the uh, western side of the freeway. Which side, which direction do the cars come from, coming from the north? They come from the left, right? They go from your left to your, basically to your, to your head and then to your right shoulder. Now go to the opposite side, the eastern side of I-41. Now look at the north. Now look at the uh, cars coming from the north. Are the cars coming from the left to the right or are they going from right to left? We all see Did the, the cars change way. direction. We all see the Milky Way above us passing from east to west. According to you guys, it should split apart at the equator and go opposite, opposing directions. No, it should not. Your inability to nope. understand it does not disprove it. We have in the chat Bill Smith, everybody. Hello, hello. Hey. Well, hello. Welcome to the show club. Yes. Oh, and you said I wasn't sure. I had to go check. Yeah. I wasn't sure, but... <clears throat> um. So our own solar system is tipped by about 63 degrees with respect to the plane of the galaxy. Sounds Wait, right. Did you just say perspective? Yes. <laughs> so now, Gary, are you aware that in your flat Earth model, the uh, from the North Pole to the Tropic of Cancer is 66.6 .6 degrees? Oof. Oh my God! Ooh. Did you know that the the sun circling around is one thousand six hundred and sixty six miles in your model? Uh, I'm mi faint. Miles per hour? Can you believe that? <gasps> Freemasons, oh, uh, satanic oh, numbers in your own thing, hidden in plain sight. The thing with people, the people like Gary who get fixated on this thousand miles per hour, we define what we define what a mile per hour is. So if we define uh, say the RPM or uh, the speed as one one mile per hour, it wouldn't sound that bad. But because we define what a mile is and how long it takes to go across it, it sounds very scary to Gary to say one thousand. But he can't get around the whole problem of it's still one revolution per twenty four hours. Well, I have a question. Uh oh. Let's hear it. Okay, so when you start. Start your car. How many miles per hour is the engine idling at? Yeah, I've told. I asked Gary the same thing. I say, when my car is at two thousand RPM cruising on the highway, what speed am I going? <laughs> Gary, you're ridiculous. Gary, you know what, what I my... do? What? Uh, you know what I do tell flat earthers is that uh, you know the sun actually spins between nine hundred and fifty and fourteen hundred and fifty miles per hour due to their model. I would just put it like this, Gary. If you really want to make it scary, mm -hmm. instead of saying miles per hour, just use inches per hour. That's better. Yeah, that gets that gets really scary. But Four Gary, did you per hour? But Gary, did you know that this that this is from the Earth to the Sun is one AU? That's <laughs> just one. It's not a thousand. It's just one. Goodness. <laughs> it's like. I think they do actually get confused because when you say, oh, the closest galaxy is, uh, well, not the closest galaxy, the closest star to Earth is four light years away. You know, it's... The, the, the best, the, the deepest imagery I've got of galaxies, and they are, or I think, if I can remember correctly, they are 197, 197 million light years away. And I think I posted them out earlier to... Uh... MC2, and I think. 
Mm. But when you say something like, uh, this is the closest star is only four light years away, they seem to think that that means that stars should be, uh, you know, going all wacky across the sky or some something like that. So they have, really have no perspective of what things are supposed to be in the globe model. Well, it's like when I do my astrophotography, I really don't see any, like when I do Andromeda or, or the Pleiades, the Pleiades don't really change, you know, the the, uh, the distance between the two of them. They everything pretty much looks stagnant. It's just the stuff that's around it, like satellites and other stuff that passes through, so you can kind of tell. But yeah, I've looked at imagery from the fifties and sixties and of the Pleiades, and it's pretty much the same stuff. So all right, so Gary, uh, so I have up on the screen now, and oh, I'll I'll update that so you guys see it too because it's a, I changed it. Um, <laughs> A picture that Lemonbird shared with me in an attempt to suggest there were three poles. So three celestial poles. This is um, a 360 degree view of um, from somewhere kind of close to the equator. You can tell it's closer to the north. It's the north of the equator because you can see Polaris. Um, I think that's a Chilean desert. Sounds sounds legit. So Gary says, your star trails show them turning opposite, yet it doesn't affect the Milky Way or Orion's belt. Actually, this image here, just a time-lapse image, you can see the Milky Way there, just shortly, just a little bit above uh, the horizon. So it does affect everything, Gary. Now this, this image, don't get confused about this image. This image is very much distorted so that everything can fit onto one two-dimensional um, image, even though it's a from a three-dimensional source. Gary, come, Gary, come down to Hensley Lake and meet up with me, and I will show you all about 360 cameras. And if I, if you do, you have to pro if you come down and I school you on 360 cameras, you have to promise to leave the internet forever. Because <laughs> I'm not wasting my time. But one, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to head off. Uh, I've got a video to make. Uh, but one thing I want to say is it's very easy to debunk a model that you make up. You know, so when it comes to uh, the globe model, a lot of flat earthers just make up their own globe model and it becomes very easy to debunk. And that's what's known as a straw man. Yep. So, yeah. Anyhow, I'm going to head off. Uh, see ya. Yeah, thank you. If, see you. Uh... I know, I know you all are subscribed to him to Planar Walk already, right? Yeah, but I get my shield check from just in case, just in case. I'll I am in, in chat. Yes, and MC Tune, thank you for that laugh when I arrived. Oh, the um, when someone said about Kevin Dish and you said that you're allergic to bananas, that was brilliant. <laughs> uh, and I didn't even get that joke. I feel embarrassed now. <laughs> also, nice, nice T-shirt. Yes, this is Planar Walk's shirt here. Got it on. You still got Gary thing yes. on the screen. Uh, All right, zip. No, um, Bye. it's not. I yeah. switched oh. back. So. Oh, I'm still seeing as your. Yeah. Yep. There we go. There you go. So, oh, Bill has his camera on even here. Let's let's see, Bill. How you doing, Bill? You're on screen. I'm doing great. Yep. Good to see I you. I even have my dog. See? Oh, what kind of dog? <laughs> what kind of dog is that? Uh, that's a Bichon. Bichon. Ah. I've had my dogs on. I've had one of my dogs on. Tommy, that is Bill Smith. Yes. Yep. I actually do exist. He's not just well, a uh, NASA well, agent in a, in a we cell. We don't know that for sure. I'm gonna get my dog. Hold it, could, on. it could be just CGI. Exactly. Yeah, it's a CGI dog. That's you notice it, it, she's white, and you notice the color on the NASA logo is white. So, in the space, I'm seeing I'm, white. I'm seeing bubbles, so I'm thinking it's underwater. Yeah, <laughs> it is. This is clearly a fake <laughs> space walk, you guys. Yep. <laughs> oh, what's this? Here you go. Oh. <laughs> She doesn't know what she, yeah. she's a little uncomfortable. This is Diamond. It's like the Westminster Cattle, uh, cattle. This is the Westminster cat, uh, Dog Show. Yep. That's right. And, 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 and mine is, uh, her name is Snuggle. Snuggle. Oh, my. 
<laughs> I'm jealous. I don't have a dog anymore. Yeah. I'll hang my head in, in depression and shame. <laughs> you're, you're fine, Bobby. She had um, she had some uh, uh, problem on her paws, and uh, the vet got a lot of my money. Mm. That's why you get pet insurance. Ah, oh, pet insurance. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in a little more rural area, Ooh. so like <laughs> they just put them down, don't they? Yeah, it was it was more of a yeah cost of a bullet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Poor puppy. Yeah, no, no, she wasn't that bad. But uh, all right, Tommy has Tommy's done this cool experiment with a parasol that uh, that helps you to know where how you are um who who is spinning so all right i gotta find the the right <clears throat> the right folder here wrong folder so tommy did uh this cool Thing. He put lights on a parasol, which the rest of us know as an umbrella. Yeah, this is this is in the Victorian area there, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> take, a, take, take my girlfriend down to the walk by the lake with a parasol and her little picnic <laughs> basket. So there is number one. I'm still seeing you. And uh, yeah, you guys, uh, hold on. So Tommy, what is number one here? So there's oh. Christmas lights in uh, in a in a parasol to to replicate stars spinning, and of course it's a little shaky. He's probably using his hands to spin it, right? Um, so uh, this one is, I, I think it's uh, you're viewing it from underneath, right? The 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 umbrella is spinning. It looks like it. There's a little part that's blocked out where the could be the uh, the pool there. So. Yeah, and then second one here. Uh, when he explained it live, it was much better. But he's not in the chat. You want to come in the chat? You can. Let me just. They look really cool, one. huh? Oh, he said yeah. And he said right here he is the camera spinning. Oh, he said that. Okay. I think. I think Tommy was on an acid trip when he took these. <laughs> yeah, it's a street light. So, all right. So, all right. He's coming in, right? I think so. Yep, yep, Why does that look like a flat earther's something. picture of a star? Oh, my goodness. I love those. They're so awesome. <laughs> and, and to say, and here's, it's, it's like the ultimate in just being a big, stupid liar. When they're like, what? This isn't really a star. This is just NASA CGI. This is the real star, and then they show the stupid, uh, you know, out of focus, chromatic aberration filled star of, uh, you know, through a P900. Yeah, I can, then they I, try can tell you, I can tell you what it is. It's that Tommy finally got his green camera, which is the P900, and he put it out of focus. And was able to zoom in the flatness. <laughs> <laughs> zoom in. The I could probably do something with my drones where I get like a, I, I'll get a couple of my drones and have one in the middle doing like an orbit in a certain direction. Then I have one on the top looking down and one on the bottom looking up. And yeah, I don't know if I can get one to get the camera to point up though. All right, here. Hey, hey, Tommy. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right, so this is uh, so just for a second, we're on the the star oh. and, and planet thing. So here, here's the. Uh, why are NASA images not really close to reality? And so they have the images on the top there that are from a telescope, and then on the bottom from a P nine hundred that's out of focus. Well, and in all fairness, um, Saturn actually does have a very similar shape to Saturn. So yeah, that's good for them. 
Well, here's the thing too. Neptune and Uranus wouldn't be able to be seen through a telescope. <laughs> like like that. Yeah, they must have just those are, picked stars. Those are by like uh, uh I think one of those is the Voyager imagery and I think the other one I can't tell what the Uranus, Uranus one, but the Neptune or sorry, the Neptune one is uh, a Voyager image, I think, if I remember correctly just by looking at it. But uh, the Uranus, but you won't see that stuff through a, tel- a telescope. I can't even see those things through a telescope. I can get Venus. It's basically just like a white ball for me. I can get Mars. I can get the, the caps. I can see pretty good on the, uh, uh, the can- not canals, but the uh, the dark, the black bands. And Saturn, I can see the rings. On Jupiter, I can see all the bands too. But uh, for me, Venus is nothing but a big white sphere. And But I can't see Neptune and Uranus even remotely like that. Yep. Sorry. I wonder why that is. <laughs> All right. Mm. We're on to... He, here's uh, here's Tommy's, uh, Tommy's thing. Gary, pay That's attention to this now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as I said, I was uh, spinning the umbrella with my hand. So the black is uh, kind of blurred there. But uh, I was just spinning it around to show the stars spinning. I, and that's I not the perfect circle. Well... Tommy just moved the goalpost because it was first it was a parasol and now it's an umbrella. So I'm just confused yeah. and denied it. <laughs> yeah, I actually call it a parasol in Norway. Uh, <laughs> 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 umbrella right. is for the rain, a parasol is for the sun. All right, so there is See, basically, the first one. Yeah, that's the star spinning. And I had the camera just underneath it. All right, and this is that's the, the uh, camera spinning. Um, I actually built a Lego contraption to spin the camera inside that one. Oh. So spinning around its own axis. That is, Lego that is, is awesome. Hot. That's cool. <laughs> oh. Did, did, Dude. did you see that, Don't, you see that picture? There's there's some nerds in here that you're you're getting a little excited. <laughs> did you see that picture in the northern or southern hemisphere? North. Uh, I did at 60 <laughs> degrees, just north of uh, Oslo in Norway. Well, then you would have to spin it the other way for the southern hemisphere. Damn! Every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bill is too good. And I tilted it up like, yeah, it's uh, stuck. <coughs> Got it stuck there. Tilting. Okay, I see. So it's high tech. All right. Very high tech. Hey, hey, it's better high than Dell's. It's better than Dell's Lego LIGO lab, so there's that. No. So here's number three. That is, again, the umbrella spinning from a distance. Now it's uh, two or three meters away or something. And and it's not tracing circles anymore. It's, it's, uh, it's ellipses. Ellipse. Oval. Somebody should get, like, uh, get two parasols, quote-unquote, or otherwise known as umbrellas. And basically op- open them up so they're basically ha- uh, the insides are facing one another where, the, you know, the handles chop the handles down where basically you get both sides come together with a with a notch in the middle and then take a 360 camera, stick it up in the middle and then uh, uh, have the lights and have the, uh, the uh, quote unquote parasols rotate in one direction, but have the camera in the middle like it would be at the horizon and yeah. see what the camera would see. Oh, yeah. It could be like a, like a Darth Maul umbrella, you know, just... Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, like right with a with a quote unquote parasol on one side and a quote unquote parasol on the other side. Yeah, with the, kind of like when they're yeah. on the equator and it kind of it looks both ways and kind of sees like yeah. uh, closer to the, yeah. the north and, uh, and the south side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, I just thought that was the this was the previous that had uh, that didn't survive a storm like ten years ago. So it's been under my um, Porsche for ten years. It's rotten as hell, but. The last picture here is uh, again the uh, camera spinning from a distance, and that's a perfect circle. So that's the Earth spinning. So both of the cameras, when the camera is uh, spinning, that's the Earth spinning, and you get the perfect circle. And with the uh, umbrella is spinning, uh, the stars are spinning, you don't get the perfect circle. So, uh, Gary, you're wrong. I still think you're on acid trip and you just happen to take pictures. Yeah, just like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, actually, could, could you put a Lego man on that thing? Because I don't really <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I, yeah, that's not the scale. I don't see a Lego man in there in the middle anywhere, then, so. Is that umbrella, is that an umbrella spinning at a thousand miles per hour? Is it better? At, be? at the, yeah, at the equator? Yeah. 
Why is it that uh, us Globers always had the best excuses? I don't get it. Because <laughs> that's how the world actually works, because it's a globe. Yeah. Hey, Gary, why don't you answer my question in the chat there? I don't think why, he's uh, listening. The, the star actually. station spinning. <laughs> I don't think he's listening. Dwayne Keller Gary launched a balloon where recently from my town that went to 120,000 feet. You clearly see the stars. When it rotated south, it looks like the Southern Cross. Looks like. Ooh. Wow. Wow. Looks you mean there's a lot of stars? And something has a, like, looks similar to it? So, yeah. Speak go ahead. That's that's confirmable. So go ahead and, and, and make sure that you, you do that. Now, here this, I love, I love Dwayne Kellum. So somebody, uh, Gleam said that Dwayne is not a an actual flat earther. Oh, the no true Scotsman fallacies in play again? What's that? I said the no true Scotsman fallacy is in uh, effect I, again. I don't know if that was it or, or what, but uh, um, so I have uh, I, I the most recent video where you can see stars. He called it I see stars. I went to his bit shoot and I downloaded the whole thing. It's big. Um, and let me see. I'm gonna. That's what she said. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> always. <laughs> uh, while he's doing that, while he's doing that, uh, when they speaking about balloons, and they bring up the whole Red Bull thing, and they open up the door, and they see the the they say the horizon out there. If you guys ever get in those kind of discussions with people, just get a picture of that ahead of time and change the brightness and contrast, and you can definitely see that the actual ground horizon is much lower because it's inside that uh, white band of atmosphere. So what you're seeing of the clouds is the fighters will will pull up the ground horizon when the when the uh, uh, when the when the gondola is low to the, the ground. They'll say, "Oh, look, there's a horizon. That's the ground." But when they get up high, the, the flat earthers will go from the ground horizon to the atmospheric horizon where the air is. No, no, no. Change the brightness and contrast. It even comes out even better if you change the brightest contrast and invert the colors. You can see the actual ground horizon pop up much much lower than uh, uh, that, that they're saying it is. And also, they talk about atmospheric pressure and stuff like that. When uh, the guy, uh, when Bumnerner jumps out of the uh, the balloon or off the gondola and starts to fall, watch the red straps on his uh, on his chest. They're not moving as he's falling. It after takes a while for those straps to actually start moving because he's in you know in a place with no atmosphere. So there's no reason why the uh, the straps would flap. So that's another reason, another thing you guys can use when uh, dealing with atmospheric pressure and whatnot. Well, you can't, uh, Dwayne, you can't use the, the, red, the Red Bull uh, video for anything because you can't see stars because that's how you know that oh, all yeah. the moon landings were fake. I know. I, 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 it's there like, you I, you know, I mean, I look, I see the stars and then I look at the street light and like all the stars has disappeared. I just, man, it's like NASA's got me confused all over again. And then you got Tommy here with his parasail mm -hmm. stuff. And I'm just, yeah, I'm a, yeah. I'm a, I'm a pyramid earther now. <laughs> I do helix. I'm more of a pyramid slash sits on top of a dodecahedron. Everything just kind of matches together because <laughs> I say so. All right. So I have here a still from his, from uh, Dwayne Kellum's most recent video, which Gary just told us to watch. Right. And I have right mm -hmm. here a still, and I added this white line because it clearly shows this, <clears throat> the, the curve of the horizon. So. Dun, dun, dun. He also said uh, he's glad to see we agree that the stars is spinning and not the Earth. So, uh, yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah, so. No stars in the picture. It's fake CGI. Yeah. Nice um, job. <laughs> so here we see on the left side, I put the, the white line right on the edge of the horizon there. And I'll go over to the right side, right on the edge of the horizon to the right of this uh, the little inset there. And in the middle, you can see it curves up. Definitely curves up. So I love well, Dwayne. I love Dwayne because every <laughs> one of his high altitude videos has has some curve <clears throat> showing. No, so. but if you look though, the Earth is clearly blue below that line you put in, and brown above it. That's just smog or something. Of course. It's yeah, that, it's, that, it's, it's it's a bulge that, of smog because that's what yes, smog does. 
Yep, exactly. I, don't, I don't believe that's real because I don't think that insert would actually be floating above the sky like that. So I'm not buying this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, when when I watch a sunset, I don't see a white line like you drew in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And when I watch the sunset, my eyes get really sore for some reason, and then sometimes my skin gets red, and it must be the chemtrails. I don't know what that is, but spray, that's what, that's what you, you need. You need to open up your eyes more. You gotta like hold your <laughs> eyelids open, and that's how you get rid of that. Yeah, the burning means that, you know, the sun's doing its job is brightening up your eyes. Cause yeah, it's like, it's like hydrogen peroxide. You just, as you pour it, it's, it, it burning means it's doing the right thing. It's, it's, exactly. It's, kill, it's killing all the NASA uh, uh, mini bots. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, uh, that, that's, why, that's why you use Bactine, not, not hydrogen peroxide. Yeah, I know. I'm old-fashioned like that. So here we see also the barometric pressure. In inches of mercury, a very freedomy unit there, uh, is 0.17 inches of mercury. Um, when on the ground, this same video has, I forgot, 20 or 30, whatever the, uh, you know, ground level inches of mercury, which I don't have memorized, uh, 14.7 psi or 760, is it 760 tor? Or millimeters of mercury 29.92 is, is yeah 29.92 inches okay i sorry i i'm sorry i forgot my freedom units um i don't even know what an inch is to be honest what is it like a food uh, it says it says what's this kph <laughs> air speed? what's the kph kph K... yeah <laughs> kilos per hour or what yeah no, no. Kilograms per hour? per hour? I don't understand either. Kilobytes. Kilobytes. Uh, so anyway, so the it, it clearly shows the pressure gradient, which, you know, I love it when they bring up the second law of therm thermodynamics. Um, because they're like, how come, uh, you know, pressure next to a vacuum? Like, well, there is no vacuum. Space is not a perfect vacuum. Um, so there is a pressure, and, it, and it's a gradient. So this video here shows going from... 28 to 0.17 so how does that happen if there's I not just, a force to cause that disequilibrium well it's all about that it, it's all about that pesky first law uh, newton's law you know it takes a force you know the uh, first law of newton uh flat earthers always seem to forget that when things drop and stuff like that or things move it actually takes a force so yeah, yeah. This, you know, an object in motion or rest will stay in motion or rest until acted upon by a net force greater than zero, well, basically, something like that. Here's the thing, yeah. um, the surfers have this wrong. Uh, they're always saying that you can't have gas pressure next to a vacuum, but if they actually research a little bit, they want to understand it's gas pressure next to no pressure at all. And that it actually can be done, and we know it. Well, here, yeah. here's another thing you can do. Um, Remember I was saying, I put a thing in the post about being in Mount Akea. It's the only yeah. place that I know of that you can drive from Kona, Hawaii, which is at sea level, and in an hour, you can drive to 13,800 feet in altitude, and it's a six PSI differential in pressure. So if, if, if there is a container, I don't know where it is, but it must be somewhere between those two points. So I haven't found it yet. What it well, is, like, is, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, if like from where I'm at, I can go from, because uh, I'm by 800, I'm about 865, I got a survey marker by me, so I'm about 865 feet ASL, and I can drive up into Yosemite, go to Tioga Pass, and I'm up by 9,000 feet ASL. So. Yeah, and for me, um, I'm also not sure how, how what my elevation above sea level is, I've never checked. But where I live in southern Manitoba, it's very, very flat. Not not a flat earth, it's just very flat. And even for like us, with um we'll have um small dips here and there and, and small, like small relatively speaking, they're still noticeable. But if I go say from the uh, the top of one to the bottom of one, I can notice my ears start to pop a little bit and that's nothing compared to a mountain. So it's not it's e it's very easy to notice. It's not like you have to be somewhere where you're going like, you know, a kilometer in difference or something. Yeah, you can, uh, you can, go, you can go to New York City and the base of the World Trade Center is at 20 feet in altitude. 
when you actually go down and go in the elevator in 45 seconds, you're up at about, I would say, I think it's about 1,280 feet. And uh, it, there's a huge difference there. But that's actually a six PSI differential if you actually take a barometer with you. Hmm. You know what would be really cool? I can't do that in Norway because the highest uh, building we have is just about 100 meters or 300 feet. So. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't <laughs> mind going to the, uh, if I had the money, do it like, what's it called? The Burj Khalafi? Khalafi? Burj Khalifa. The in, um, yeah, Burj Khalifa. Khalifa. That'd be cool. Take the elevator just from, from the top to the bottom or vice versa just once. Probably a very fast elevator, too. I, I actually have, I was just in the Swiss Alps. Uh, back in May, and one of the uh, cable cars we had, I'll have to see if I can find the picture, had actually a barometer in it to show you the differential in pressure from when you started to when you were done. Oh, an even simpler way to show it and something like that, even when they don't have that, is get an empty 20-ounce uh, soda bottle and a balloon and just put the balloon over the top of the bottle without adding anything to it at the bottom and then see what happens when you get to the top of the elevator. Yeah. Or even a bag of chips. Mm-hmm. Some fatters that, just claim it's the temperature. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the temperature. Well, well, what, what, what I tell people to do is that if, if they don't believe in it, I tell them to go to Kona, get there, get themselves two bags of chips, Take one, put a pinhole in it, and leave the other one sealed. Get yourself a cheap bottle of water, drink it, then drive to the top and see what happens. And at about 11,000 feet, the one bag of chips will blow up, and obviously the other one won't do anything. And then when you're done, tape over the uh, the hole in the one bag of chips and drive back down to Kona, and yep. they'll both look like they're vacuum packs. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how it is in uh, Yosemite cool. when you drive over Tioga Pass because it's, uh, like I said, 9,000 feet. And as you're coming up from the valley, you got a bag of chips you bought in Fresno. It's you know, like a normal bag. You get up where Tiger Pass, the things all puffed up like a, like, a, like a pillow. And then as soon as you start going back down, they go to uh, Mono Lake. It starts deflating all over again. I yeah. think it was a uh, slice bar can who drove with a bottle in his seat with a balloon over it. Yeah, he he drove did. up and down the mountain. Mm-hmm. So you see the balloon expanding a bit and then going down again. Yeah, yeah I was yeah, going re- to recreate that, but you got to, for my other channel, but. Uh, Yosemite Tiger Pass is starting to close for this winter time because it's starting to snow up there now. So, my plans were shot by weather. I wonder what causes the Maybe... uh, winter to occur. Hmm. <laughs> well, I, I, I ran into the same thing because I used to live in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and it's 7,500 feet in altitude. And I, li- I worked in Albuquerque, which was 5,000 feet. And my wife actually worked in uh, Los Alamos, which was 7,500 feet. And uh, but I was in the vacuum industry, so we had like very good equipment to determine what the barometric pressure was. And even at Los Alamos, I mean, the, the go to place to tell what the barometric pressure was was a mercury column. So, yeah, Albuquerque, huh? Do you mean you yeah. can't you mean you can't tell by our senses alone? We need instruments. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> does does uh in Albuquerque does the air smell like warm root beer? Mm, and will people it's... shave your back for just one nickel? Wait, yes. <laughs> Wait, and and how often do you get get lost by taking the wrong turn when you get there? <laughs> you know just, what? That's just bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> You, you, I, you know, you know, you, you actually don't need a GPS for that town because the whole damn place is in a grid and everything. And there's mountains on one side. So as long as you can use your senses, you can figure out where you need to go. So, <laughs> so I, I, I did anybody get my reference? I, I oh, did. Which one? No. What? About what? About Albuquerque. What, what, Oh, which, which turn to go? Yeah, I took the wrong turn in Albuquerque. No, I, that's uh, not that wasn't mine. Fresno. That was mine. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not like group here. no. It, it was it's a song by Weird Al called Albuquerque. Oh, I know that song. Oh, he's, I got, he's awesome. I haven't heard that song in like ten years. I forget like, oh. the lyrics, but I know that song. Yep. Everybody's just trying to be that's cool now for MC. 
I saw he cut his hair a few years ago, and it was totally different. It was looking like a re real human. <laughs> That's long now. <laughs> Again? It's been yeah, long for, been for <laughs> 20 years, about. Hey, what's, wrong with long, what's wrong with long hair? Yeah. <laughs> uh, hair. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was on uh, oh, Running with Scissors, which was is 99, I think. It came out. Yeah. And he has long hair that. Yeah. Well, cause I, I was born in 1990, so I remember, like, like oh, very, very vaguely. I remember um, the Weird Al Yankovic show or whatever it was called, but the one with him in it. And, yeah, he always had the long hair, and I don't remember anything about it, but he was you know, very popular you know, in the 90s. You know, the best movie of all time is UHF. Oh yeah, and the best ad that they ever had on there was Spatula City. Spatula City. So we we watch um, we so every year a friend and I we watch that movie and eat a Twinkie Wiener sandwich. <laughs> what? And if you've seen the movie, that? <laughs> yep. you'll know he eats a Twinkie Wiener sandwich. So here's here's the deal. Um, my friend and I we had we had. Um, <clears throat> We're watching it one time at my kid's third birthday, we're and we're um, eating a Twinkie Wiener sandwich. And we're like, you know what? We've each had three Twinkie Wiener sandwiches so far in our life, and this is his third birthday. How about this? Every year around his birthday, we'll go, we'll watch the movie, and we'll eat a Twinkie Wiener sandwich until we get to twenty-seven, which which we will eat our final Twinkie Wiener sandwich because twenty-seven is Weird Al's number. And then uh, still watch it every year, but not eat the Twinkie Wiener sandwich. So there you go. And everybody's and everybody's dead from heart disease. Yes. So, okay. <laughs> what exactly is a Twinkie Wiener sandwich? Is it just like a hot dog wiener and a Twinkie in buns, or like I don't? Uh, no, the Twinkie is the bun. You turn it upside down. You slice it open. Oh. It has to be a plastic knife. Um, you put in the hot dog, and there's a there's some discussion on whether the hot dog has to be hot or cold. It, you don't see it, but it might be hot. I prefer them cold. My friend likes them hot. That's, that's communism. Right. Then you put the Americans um, are the craziest name for snacks. <laughs> Ding dongs, you Twinkies, all. Oh, oh. All right, so then you put oh, oh. you put uh, easy cheese on it from a can, right? The oh, oh my god, oh. <laughs> we're, we're And then you need a you need a mug of milk. And you dip it in the mug, and you eat up. Hey, I hate cheese and I hate milk. This is not looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if you're gonna yeah. ever be invited to this thing, man. It it no, is no, that time of year actually. So within the next couple of weeks, we'll be doing that. You probably got the ambulance on speed dial, don't you? Oh no, it's super good. <laughs> I'm Just sure the heart goes. Eat it, eat it. <laughs> it's not. Wait, I'm gonna eat it. I get that reference. All right, G Gary, why didn't you show the stars? I don't know if I can even talk to you, Gary. Like, you're not listening to us, so. Um, Gary, I'm looking outside right now at the moon, and I don't even see stars. Uh, if, so if I look in a different about, direction, I see stars. He's talking about the video. Oh. Uh, that, that, see, I didn't show the video. I just took the still from the video. Why well, doesn't Gary just get in the chat or come in on in? Uh, he was here way before me, and uh, he had time to do it. Well, he clearly yeah, has time because he's been the entire time. I think Gary just likes to touch himself in the back, back chat and <laughs> I yeah, think, talk about stars and bright things. I think it should be a Tommy and Gary debate is what it should be. Yeah, agreed. If, if, totally uh, agree. If, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I think, I think it here. should be... I think it should be Spurs and... Uh, uh, Spurs is a troll. No. No, not Spurs. Yeah, I no. got. Yeah. No, I'm. Uh, who, uh, who's that? Uh, who's that crazy guy? Uh, with always like to take his shirt off. <laughs> God, he's a, a couple, a couple of them. <laughs> the method where camera. Oh yeah, Scotty Storm and uh, Spurs. I would love to see that to go at it. I can do a squad for you. Just a little more. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. No, Sorry. This you, you got, you're not doing it right. You had to first say, "I think it's getting hot in here." I'm gonna. Is it okay if I take my shirt off? You just gotta take it off really slow as you stand up, and then yeah, make sure you're muted. It's so getting the... hot in here. Yeah, no. Yeah, but you 
with the first year ago, I think it's getting hot in here. You might. Have I to have take the my... same missing shoulders. I have just the same building and no shoulders at all. So it's perfect. It's a Viking thing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Gary is my biggest fan. He has uh, about five videos now. Just uh, me and his uh, channel. I have a few of him all over. But I think me and Gary would be a great uh, debate. Yeah. Gary's been hiding in the you know chats for well over two years now, so that's where he likes to hide at. Yeah, you know, you know, just so you know, Gary, this is the first time I've ever actually done this, and it was so easy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and if if Bill can do it, <laughs> anybody can do it. Tom, I know, and you, and, and you, you, know, you know, the amazing part is that my kids are probably upstairs on their Discord servers doing something else. But I won't ask them because they get mad at me every time I ask them how to do something. <laughs> <laughs> and all right, Bill, what do you uh, what do you do if, if uh, don't don't share anything you don't feel comfortable, but uh No, I'm a uh um I actually I'm a mechanical engineer and uh I actually work for myself. I've been doing it now for 20 years. Um, I do a whole slew of things from packaging design to doing vacuum systems, and mainly I do motorsports. Motorsports? Yep. So Jared, did it, you hear that? <laughs> yep. <laughs> we, we could have some fun. So I, I, I will actually be in Daytona next month, uh, starting, you know, doing, an, doing another job. So. And, oh, yeah, uh, off-season testing is about to kick off. Yeah, this is actually historic racing, which is actually the most fun because it's the least amount of pressure. So they have they have every year at Daytona, they have what they call the Daytona 24 Classic. And uh, I'll be down there with an, another car from somebody else. And what I do, my big thing is I just do debt acquisition. So Debt acquisition. Data. Acquisition. Data acquisition. Okay. So, <laughs> So like like all the all the cars have, yeah. So I've been I've been an old data guy since back in the geez, early nineties back in IndyCar. Sounds awesome. Hmm. That sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah, Tommy, your your audio is a little choppy. Something's weird. Yeah. Hang on, let me, let me see if I can help it. <laughs> I'll learn so, a trick on the shield show by resetting that audio engine and uh, restart audio engine. How's it now? Sounds better. That's better. Cool. And then, and then my my wife has uh, my wife is a chemist, and so she works for a big company, and she makes basically all the foam that goes in your car for like interiors and stuff. Mm, okay. Yep. All right. So mechanical engineer, we have a. Uh, uh, an experiment from Christopher Manabat. I have an experiment suggestion. Put a helium balloon in a box, drop the box off a building. Will buoyancy reverse due to air density in the box as it accelerates down? Mm. I don't know. What do you mean by <laughs> buoyancy reverse? <laughs> I think what he's saying is um, at the the closer the balloon gets to the ground, because the air becomes more dense, if the balloon will start to, at some point, um, fight against gravity due to the buoyant force, where it wouldn't at the top of the building, because it's just um, uh, less dense air around it, I think. Well, also, what kind of box are you using? Like, are we going to go with a hermetically sealed PVC type setup, or like plexiglass, or are we going with like a cardboard box. <laughs> I'm just gonna go with the he I'm gonna go with the heaviest thing possible so I get terminal velocity. <laughs> so I think um I don't I don't I don't think Christopher's a flat earther. I think uh will it reverse? I think maybe in the other direction, right? Because as pressure decreases the, the helium balloon will get bigger. Right? So will its buoyant force increase because of that? Yeah. He subscribes I, as you to go up. of uh, Globers, so I don't think it's a flat or no. I, I, I think in general what it comes down to is such a, a general experiment that somebody wants to do that they don't like specify anything else, so you're kind of like hey, you, gotta fill you the can't holes. give an answer for that. Yeah, you're just like, well, you know, I could sit there and go, well, I'm going to have a box that's going to be as big as a city bus, 
or am I going to have a box that's going to be only, you know, it's going to have, you know, ten thousandths of an inch on each side of the, the balloon? You don't know. So, or is there going to be a balloon that's going to be made out of mylar or one that's out of something else? I mean, there's, it, it the, these are the general questions that just, just basically pigeonhole you that somebody can go, well, what if I did this? Now all of a sudden you're wrong. So. Yeah, but the, the experiment the experiment is kind of flawed because the the card box or whatever box they use is going to have air resistance. So, mm -hmm. you know, the balloon is not going to do that much. Well, if it's a cardboard box. And, of course, depending how big the box is. Well, Maybe. Alchemist said something that just really aggravates me. Gravity is canceled in free fall. <laughs> No. It, it, no. Gravity is still there. It's just when you're in free fall, everything is moving at the same rate. So you get the appearance of gravity not being as apparent. Again, it's the appearance of not actuality. Oh, hold on a second. I get, well, he I get. says you, you know what I mean, but I think you should make sure to specify that when you're saying it because Flurus will take that and Sherry pick the crap out of that if you don't say it properly. Yeah, why? Why? Gravity doesn't exist. And and so in free fall, it doesn't matter. I don't know why you have to, you know, it's not been proven. You didn't prove it. Do you have, what was your experiment with the independent variable where you, pro where you prove the cause? No, we're doing you this have, again. Oh, you got the flat jacket back on? Yeah, 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 yeah. As yeah. long as you don't use time, you're good. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I, always, going I, I always use time as my independent variable. Yes, but well, you, can, cannot, can, you can't manipulate time. Therefore, yeah, it cannot what, what, be used as an independent variable. Uh, yeah, can, you, can you, you, you? You can manipulate time. Ask the people for Mandela effect. Nice. <laughs> Well, I, can, I can manipulate time. If I go to bed, I close my eyes, and before I know it, it's been eight hours. If I don't close my eyes, it takes eight hours for that eight hours to pass. So explain that mm -hmm. to me. Well, I, I got you all beat. I can manipulate time. I just take my uh, my watch, and I take that little dial on the side, and I just kind of spin it one direction. I move the hour hand one one hour up. I just manipulated my time. Uh, I'm awesome. that good. Well, let's do you this. Know, uh, we, we, need to, we need to get going here pretty soon, and Brainy Beaver's got something going. But... Uh, I have here one of seven that I've assembled so far of uh, like uh, Sleeping Warrior has his 10 citations that that he thinks say that the uh, experimenter must manipulate the independent variable. And that's it. Right. So now you have to apply that religious dogma, according to him. So here is um, uh, the a citation prepscholar.com. Independent variable, what the scientist changes or what changes on its own. The independent variable is the variable whose change isn't affected by any other variable in the experiment. Either the scientist has to change the variable or it changes on its own. Two common independent variables are age and time. Well, that's just wrong. That's just, you don't have the right. You know, Interesting. Right, yeah, that's quite ish. You just don't have the right printout. You got to go to like go something. Oh, need a different gotta one. Gotta go to uh, Here's the thing. The all, of, thing. all of his citations, I've looked at several of them. The websites, like explorable.com, has it all right. They they have science described well in there. And he cherry picked that thing so that he can oh. make his point. Oh. Okay, so so Christopher Manabad actually did uh, clarify a bit air density, not gravity. Will air density increase at the top of the box as it accelerates downward? Will the increase in air density push the balloon down? This is this is just like that uh, experiment putting a balloon in a car and you yeah. and you accelerate forward. It's the same the same principle. Yeah. yeah. Try that with a GoPro camera inside and just do it. Well, that's good. Oh, oh he, he means that the balloon was inside of the box. Okay, I yeah. see. Yeah, it can't use the GoPro camera because it's fish island. Oh, yeah, that's going to make everything look curved. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, um, like they were saying, there are a bunch of really good videos where people have put balloons like in a van or a car, and yeah, if they accelerate forward, the balloon will go forward, and vice versa when they're uh, when the car is braking. 
this hey, this uh, uh, since we're talking about it really quickly here, I gotta take off in a minute. Hey, uh, I gotta start setting up for this evening. Hopefully, I can get a nice some shots. Anyway, anyways, when we're if you ever notice you're talking with a flat earther and they start, uh, you look, they, it's about like looking at a plane window. You go, oh look, I can. I can see the cur- uh, I can see the curve of the Earth from the airplane window at thirty thousand feet, and they go, no, 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 that's the curve of the window. But with a flat Earth, it looks to the window, and they say, oh, look, there's a flat horizon. So when did the when did the window stop being curved for the flat Earther, but always curved for the uh, for the globe Earther? I they, they like cherry pick their uh, uh, their excuses like for a camera. They go, oh, they'll take a camera, they'll take a picture of the horizon. They're like, oh, look, it's a flat horizon. But a globe Earth will take that same camera and go up a little bit higher and take a picture. Go, they'll say, "Well, no, that camera has got a curved lens, so it's giving you a curved horizon." So, what part of the time did it the lens change for the flat Earther and for the globe Earther in this it, whole? It's when it when it when fits it their to... bias, yeah. When it, yeah. When it yeah, confirms their pre-selected outcome, then they accept it with no question. With... And if it violates well, you ruined that, it for me. yeah. If it violates with that, it. it's no good. Well. It, it's it's the same thing with that J. Tolan media that, you know, he can take a picture of like 1,200 miles away with an IR filter or whatever he can do. But if you have to use a solar filter to, to do the sun, that's not allowed. So IR filter, good. Solar filter, bad. Yeah, if, if you guys ever bring up, uh, if you get like an image of J. Tolan or say, well, the the 2,000 or 1,500 mile, whatever it is, picture from wherever it was looking at uh, – uh, Mount Shasta. All you gotta do is find, uh, go on a uh, a map, a paper map, and just get a piece of twine and go from where the airplane was and just line up from the airplane over the next set of lakes and the hills that are behind it. That line doesn't point anywhere near uh, Mount Shasta. Just give you a heads up. Great Recipient did that and he showed it was just clouds. Oh yeah, I know that. But I'm just saying. I actually went on. Um, uh, I went on a topographical map and I found out where he was at. And I yeah. took a, I took a, a a pin and I tied a piece of string to a pin. And I basically just lined up from there to the next uh, farther out where the lakes were and where this uh, where just uh, uh, the top of a mountain was. And I basically kind of lined everything up and I pulled the string straight. It wasn't even pointing remotely near Mount Shasta. So. Yeah, but I'm but I'm using a P900 right now with an IR filter on it, and I'm watching Tommy. And uh, he doesn't have any pants on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who does, in all honesty, who does right now? And with that, with that, ladies, I'm going to go ahead and start setting up for this evening. Hopefully, I can get something tonight, but I'm not getting any hopes because it's bright out. So I am going to take off. All right. All right come on. Later, Good guys. Ex- extra. Bye, ladies. Yeah, Bye, thank guys. you. Yep, yep. Uh, lady, how dare he? Extra J says <laughs> perhaps he should do a video of the sun setting with a solar filter and infrared. Perfect. Um, but I think I think it is uh, about time to get moving on here. Um, but you, let's see, what do they say? You don't have to go home, but you can't stay but here. You can't stay here. Uh, yeah, I put a link here. to Brainy Beavers. Uh, uh, he's he's going right now. It is uh, the hero we deserve, Dan Pratt. Um, he asked me mm. if I wanted to be in, so maybe I'll pop in there too. So uh, thanks everybody for uh, coming in. We had uh, let's see. Man, we had a few. We had Brainy in here. We had Planer Walk. Um, Geist View just left. We have Javier. How you doing, Javier? You want to say yeah. anything? Yeah, I'm just doing. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going. Um, thank. It's been an honor for me to for you to have me on the show, and you guys have been great. Uh, I was kind of nervous. This is my first time doing something like this, so I thought. I hope my arguments I got as clear as I thought. I see it in my head. So, uh, see you next time. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's, it's always fun. Believe me, I make an idiot of myself half the time I'm on here anyway. So, <laughs> okay. Hey, thank, thanks a lot, guy. MG Doom, thanks a lot, man. Yeah, thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Yeah, Puncher. Yeah. Just final thoughts. I Not much to say because we didn't really have. Oh, it was just a, just a fun chat. Just, chat. just a fun chat, but it was fun talking to you guys. And uh, I was like coming down here. So, thanks for having me down again. All right, thank you. Bill Smith, good to have you. Your first time, too. Yep. So the only thing I got to say is flat is where is that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, Tommy. So, Tommy, I put I put your link in the chat uh, along with everybody Thanks. else's. Um, and, uh, you, yeah, you got some uh, – I love your videos. Always good stuff. Thank you. How do you, how do you yeah. pronounce, uh, pronounce your last name for us? Granvol. 
There we go. <laughs> All right, and then uh, AT2, Jared. Always a fun time. And remember, everyone, be an actual skeptic. Question everything. Don't just deny it. All right. Well, there you go. Thank you, everybody. And uh, next time, you'll see me. <laughs> <laughs>